What's up guys Chaos Shinobi here. This is what if Naruto has a secret ojutsu. Summary, Naruto is tired of a lot of things. He's tired of being treated like trash, he's tired of being the village's punching bag, but most of all he's tired of being afraid. After one fateful day, Naruto decides he's had enough. He decides that if they wouldn't respect him, then they would fear him. Chapter 1, you know, most six-year-old kids didn't have much to worry about. Their lives consisted of running around, playing with friends, and generally just enjoying being a kid. They didn't have to worry about where their next meal was, or where they were going to sleep, or if they'd live to see the sunset. Their parents clothed them, fed them, tucked them in at night, and made sure nothing bad happened to them. They got to enjoy their childhood. As the little boy's piercing slitted blue eyes gazed at the raging inferno that consumed his apartment, he was reminded once again that he wasn't like most six-year-olds. Most ten-year-olds weren't kicked out of an orphanage at the wee old age of four. Most ten-year-olds weren't shunned by their entire village. Most ten-year-olds didn't have to dig through trash cans and steal to survive. Most ten-year-olds weren't beaten on an almost daily basis. Most ten-year-olds definitely didn't have to come home on their birthday to their house on fire. In the middle of the day. Sadly enough this wasn't even the worst he's come home to. Though his gaze was locked onto his burning home, his senses were honed in on the world around him. His eyes caught the little glowing embers as they fell from the sky before dying out when they touched the ground beneath his feet. He could smell the overwhelming scent of smoke and burning wood coming from his apartment. His red fox-like ears, which blended in perfectly with his neck-length wild spiky hair, would twitch every few seconds as they listened to the voices that whispered underneath the crackle of the flames. He he look at the demon, doesn't even know how to react. I think we broke it. Serves the little bastard right. It should count itself lucky that it doesn't have any family because I'd kill them myself just to see it suffer. It wouldn't matter what you did. Look at it, it doesn't have any emotions. That just means we have to punish it some more. I hope it shows its face today at the festival so we can kill it. To the untrained eye, the only reaction that the boy gave was a slight flick of his blood red tail. But to the Sundaime Hokage that stood next to the boy as they watched a few shinobi begin to put out the blaze. He could see just how badly it was affecting the young boy. He saw the blood slowly dripping from the boy's clenched fists, his nails having long since pierced through the flesh on his palm he saw how set his jaw was, and if the slight movement was any indication, he was grinding his teeth. If they could see his eyes, those piercing blue eyes that were being shattered by crimson hair, they would see the barely held in check rage that flowed through those orbs. Inu, Nico, Weasel, Hebi, shouted the Hokage, and not a second later the three Anbu named appeared in front of him. Round up all the civilians in the area and take them to Aviki. Tell them I want the names of those responsible on my desk before the day is over. Without a word the three Anbu dispersed into the crowd to do the Hokage's bidding. He turned back to the young boy to see him slowly walking down the street away from the warm glow of the flames. For a moment he thought about going after the boy, but with a sad sigh thought better of it. Hiruzen knew that nothing he said to the boy would make anything better. Nothing was going to take the pain of what he's gone through away and that trying to force the boy into talking would only drive him further into the despair he was in. Ever since the orphanage incident two years ago he saw how Naruto started becoming angrier with the world around him, caring only for a select few and lashing out verbally at anyone else who dared get to close. He was no longer the happy-go-lucky boy that once greeted him with a giant grin on his face, shouting about how he was going to become a strong ninja and the greatest Hokage ever. After the event Naruto changed. When he asked the boy if he still dreamed of becoming a strong ninja and eventually becoming the Hokage he was disappointed with the answer. While the boy still wanted to become a strong ninja, it wasn't to become Hokage, it was just to protect himself from the hatred of others. The villagers stole his dream and his smile. A deep sigh escaped the old man's chest as he gazed back at the dwindling flames that covered Naruto's old home. He knew he'd failed. Minato's final wish had been that his son be seen as a hero, and he was being treated like shit. It seemed like nothing he tried helped the young redhead. The only thing that kept the boy here were him, the ramen stand people, and the young boy's dream of being a ninja. The Hokage looked up into the blue cloudless sky with a determined look. He'd let the villagers take so much from the boy, he wasn't going to let them take any more. The Sundaime Hokage Hiruzen Sarutobi began walking back to his office at the Hokage Tower. He had some planning to do. In the meantime he could only hope that by some miracle someone would come along and crack the shell that surrounded the boy's heart now. Naruto kept his eyes trained on the ground as he aimlessly wandered the village in an attempt to burn off some of the emotions he was feeling. The glares and whispers that he's grown so used to didn't even register as he tried to keep his face as expressionless as possible, a silent refusal to show any amount of pain or sadness to the idiots that surrounded him. But anyone with eyes could see the rage on his face. Inside was no better. Those stupid piece of shit humans. 
I swear to Kami I want to RIP every single one of their throats out. I've never done anything to them. All I ever do is try to live my life and they keep fucking ruining everything. What did I do? What did I do to deserve this? Slowly the anger that was boiling like a cauldron in the pit of his stomach was replaced by a sadness that he knew all too well. His fists slowly unclenched, nails exiting his skin as his small wounds began to heal instantly. The fire in his eyes died out leaving them cold and lifeless as he gazed ahead emotionlessly at the road ahead, seeing but unseeing at the same time. His body went on autopilot, steering him to a destination only known by him. Of course I expected this, especially after last time when they broke in and stole everything. I'm not stupid. Still, the fact that those bastards had the nerve to destroy my home only makes me despise them more. Why do they hate me so much? I I know I'm a demon, B but I haven't done anything wrong. I know I look different, but am I really that bad? He let out a sigh and looked up into the sky. I really hate being in this stupid village. I wish I could leave, but I can't. That'd mean leaving Hokage Gigi, Tuchi-san, and Ayame Nei chan I can't leave them behind no matter how much I hate it here. I just wish there was somewhere in the village I could go without having to deal with everyone. Naruto slowed down to a halt as he arrived at the entrance of an alleyway. He cast a glance at those around him to make sure no one was following him. There were very few humans around this area and none were looking in his direction, but he couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. Not able to find anything he shrugged it off as excessive paranoia and then turned and walked into the alley. The alley was barren besides the large trash can at the very end. Naruto jogged over to the trash can cast one more glance over his shoulder to confirm he wasn't followed, and then pushed it aside to reveal a small hole on the ground that was large enough for him to squeeze through. Naruto had found this particular little hole a little over a year ago, and after a little exploration he made what it connected to his little hideaway. Without a moment's hesitation Naruto climbed into the hole, wriggling slightly before gravity overtook him and he plunged silently into darkness. He felt the hole begin to open up into a wide cavern a few moments before his feet impacted the ground and he landed in. Looking around his eyes glowed lightly in the pitch black cavern, his sight completely unhindered by the lack of light, and his ears twitched around searching for any indication that there was another presence. His tail swishing in satisfaction that no one was there, he stood and began walking towards the right. He walked in silence for a few minutes and slowly his eyes began to pick up light further down the way. He slowed to a halt underneath the source of the light, a giant hole in the earth and ceiling a few hundred feet up. The light shone down upon the area around Naruto showing the dirt floor and stone walls around him, the route in front of him ending in a pile of stones, evidence of the tunnel's cave-in. The only thing of importance and the one thing that he came for, in the light was a small chest. Naruto allowed a small smile to appear on his face at the side of the chest before he walked over and threw its lid open, revealing the contents of the chest to be a few scrolls, a wallet, and a black cloak. Living on the streets, Naruto quickly learned the arts of stealth, thievery, and pickpocketing. It was slow work at first, often resulting in the redhead getting beaten by a mob of angry villagers, but after a few weeks his hard work paid off. He started being able to avoid the civilians, getting better and better until they could no longer catch him. As his skills rose the beating nearly stopped, only happening when there was at least Chunin level ninja involved in the chase. The items in the chest were here just in case something like what just happened was to occur. He knew from past experiences that the humans that dwelled in this village had no qualms with breaking in and ransacking his stuff, so he'd started hiding his important things here where no one else could find them. The two storage scrolls he'd found a few weeks back discarded near one of the many training grounds that existed in the village. The first storage scroll was filled with spark clothes he'd stolen from various clothing stores, much to the ire of the owners. The second one was filled with multiple instruction books he'd borrowed from the library. There was a book for ninjutsu, genjutsu, Daijutsu, Fuinjutsu, and a few he hadn't looked at but grabbed because the cover looked cool. Naruto had read through all of the books on Jutsu, but to his dismay almost all of them were useless to him. The Taijutsu book was easy to understand and the few styles it had inside of it were easy to understand, but they just didn't feel right to him. They were so straightforward and ridged, and the way he moved was more fluid and malleable. For the Genjutsu and Ninjutsu, he understood the principles behind them but he could never complete even the basic chakra control practices. His control was shit, and no matter how hard he tried he just couldn't seem to get down to a manageable level. He what he needed to do, he'd read through the first part over and over to make sure, but his poor control simply wouldn't allow it. The only one that didn't seem to be useless to him at the moment was the one on Fuinjutsu. While Fuinjutsu required chakra, the drawing of the seals and understanding them didn't. It was easily the hardest book he had, and he'd flung it to the ground many times in frustration. He didn't know why, but every time he thought about throwing the book away something inside him screamed at him not to. 
That giant book intrigued him to no end. So despite the aggravation it caused him he continued to read that book, and even though he hadn't gotten past the first chapter yet, which was just the fundamentals of Fuinjutsu, he was determined to finish it. He grabbed the wallet and scrolls first and stuffed them into the side pockets of his black cargo shorts. After that was done he grabbed the cloak and wrapped it around himself, covering his plain white shirt and clasping it together with a hidden button on its inside. He turned and began to run back the way he'd come, his black shoes rhythmically hitting the stone floor the only noise inside the cavern. Naruto pulled the dumpster back over the hole and turned towards the alley entrance. Before he exited the alley he threw the hood of the cloak on, hiding his bright red hair and fox had a few destinations he had to get to now. First he was going to head over to Ijiraku's for lunch and to visit some of the few humans that cared about his existence. Next he was going to go see the Hokage to talk to him about where he was going to stay, and then afterwards he was going to get out of sight for a while before the festival started. Things never went well for him if he was spotted during the festival. He never understood what the festival was about, he just knew that it always happened on his birthday and that if he was seen while it was happening then there was a large chance he would get the shit beat out of him. He stepped out of the alleyway and began to make his way toward his first stop which wasn't too far from his current position, only a five minute walk away. As he walked the ten year old fox boy noticed something odd. He was used to the humans of the village giving him dirty looks and whispering obscenities about him but they were just staring impassively at him. He glanced behind himself and noticed a few had begun to tell him. Naruto's could feel the danger mounting as he walked without warning he took off towards the ramen stand. Reaching the stand, he spared a glance back at his pursuers and saw that they were dispersing while shooting him a few glares. They would never try anything while he was in here lest they feel the wrath of tuchiyoji san He let a triumphant fanged leer cover his whisker-marked face as he raised his hands before flashing his middle fingers at the angry villagers. Not bothering to stick around and listen to them yell about disrespectful demons and how much they wish he'd just dropped dead already, Naruto turned and entered the stand, revealing the amused face of Tuchi and the exasperated one of Ayame. Naruto, antagonizing them isn't helping you, you know that right? Sighed Ayame as Naruto leapt up into his seat in the middle of the ramen bar. He inhaled deeply and could smell the familiar scent of ramen wafting from the duo. Letting a mischievous grin that showed off his enlarged canines adorn his face he chuckled back his reply. I know Nei-chan, but it was too tempting to resist. Did you see the look on those silly humans' faces? The two let a grimace pass over their faces briefly at Naruto's words, however it was quickly covered with smiles. They knew he long stopped believing he was human and nothing they could say or do was going to convince him otherwise, just another thing the villagers took from him. I take it you're here for the usual eh Naruto? Asked Tucci as he began preparing the redhead's food, oh yeah, happy birthday squirt. All ramen is on the house. Alright Zero G-san. The ramen buffet begins now so keep em coming, Naruto exclaimed with an ecstatic expression on his face getting the two to chuckle at his antics. Tucci placed the large bowl of ramen in front of the fox boy. Naruto could feel the saliva dripping from his mouth and the delicious scent of ramen filled his nostrils as he began attacked his meal, slurping down the ramen at a rate that only he was capable of. What's on your agenda today Naruto-kun? Asked Ayami as she watched Naruto eat, oddly fascinated by the speed at which he ate. Well you know how the humans are today so after I finish up here and talk with Hokage Gigi about where I'm gonna be staying from now on. Why you talking to the Hokage about a place to stay Naruto? Asked Ayame curiously. Well the stupid humans burned my house down earlier today so I need a new place so after I talk to Hokage Gigi I'm gonna be making myself scarce for the rest of the day, he said with a sigh as he rubbed the back of his head with his right hand before diving back into his ramen. The two ramen chefs faces contorted in anger at the revealed information. They honestly shouldn't be surprised at the situation, remembering several occasions when Naruto had came running to them for help in hiding from the villagers, but it always got them how far their cruelty ran. They couldn't understand why anyone would hurt the little redhead in front of them. Sure he didn't look like the rest of them, but it was the price he had to pay for having the QB inside him. The villagers couldn't see past what was plainly in front of them, Naruto was the jailer, not the beast itself. Well if you need a place to hide you know you can always come here, said Tuchi as he handed Naruto his fifth bowl of ramen. Thanks, said Naruto pausing between bites, but people might hurt you for hiding me so I'll find somewhere else. Naruto you know we don't care about that, exclaimed Ayame. As long as you're safe it doesn't matter. Exactly, muttered Naruto, his eyes turning serious as he gazed down into his lap. You two are two of the three humans that care about my existence, and I refuse to put you two in any danger just because I need a place to hide. I'll find another place to hide so no one will have any reason to even think about hurting you. This is my problem to bear. The ramen stand evolved into an uneasy silence as Naruto's words were digested by the other occupants of the ramen stand. 
Just as Ayame was about to speak again, the entrance covering was moved aside as three others entered the stand, laughing at something one of them said. Naruto stiffened as the three took the seats surrounding him, one to his left and two to his right. Oddly quiet in here, said a boisterous voice from Naruto's right, are we interrupting something? Naruto glanced up from under his hood at the person who spoke. From what the young boy could see, she looked to be in her late teens with brown hair pulled back into a long ponytail with two bangs hanging down the front of her face next to her large black eyes. She was wearing a beige long-sleeved shirt with a high collar and tight shorts that ended just above her knees. On her feet were the standard ninja sandals. The most remarkable thing about her appearance however was the red fang-like tattoos on her cheeks. She had a playful smile on her face that looked well on her face. He could smell the scent of dogs coming off of her, a scent he'd smelled on a few other people before but he never figured out why. Naruto turned his head back to the bowl and quickly continued eating as the conversation around him began to flow. Not at all Hana, said Tucci. What can I get you three? Three bowls of your finest miso ramen and a bottle of sake gramps, exclaimed one of the people from Naruto's right. Geez Anko, do you have to be so disrespectful and loud all the time? Said the other voice to his right, this one further away. Oh hush Kurunai-chan. It's girls night so I can be as loud as I want to. The now identified Anko shouted with a mock glare. From the sound of their voices he could tell the two were female. He glanced up to get a look at them. The one closest to him looked to be older than the one to his left. There was an odd scent of snakes and forest coming from her. She had light brown pupilless eyes, purple hair that was held up in a short, spiky ponytail. A tan trench coat covered most of her and underneath it she wore dark orange mini skirt and full body mesh suit that went from her neck to her thighs. On her legs she wore shin guards that connected to her sandals, and a fang-like necklace sat around her neck, secured by a thick cord. A large grin adorned her face and her eyes were alight with mischief. Naruto couldn't stop the blush that rose to his cheeks at her appearance. He may have only been ten, but he knew sexy when he saw it. The lady furthest from him had long wavy black hair that reached the middle of her back and distinctive red eyes with a ring in them with purple eyeshadow. She was adorned in a red mesh armor blouse that looked like bandages with thorns on them. Her hands were wrapped were wrapped in bandages as was her upper thighs, and she wore standard shinobi sandals. She looked to be the oldest out of the three of them and the most polite if what she said was anything to go off of. He could smell the faint scent of cinnamon coming from her. Her red lipstick-covered lips were quirked up in a small smile as she caught sight of Naruto's clear blue eyes. You know it's impolite to stare, said the red-eyed lady. The sudden realization that the lady he was looking at noticed and was looking right back at him caused a small blush to cover his cheeks. His gaze quickly went from her to the empty ramen bowl in front of him as the other occupants of the stand snickered at the young hooded boy. You like something you see Gaki? Chuckled Anko as she leaned in close to his face causing him to blush for entirely different reasons. S shut up lady. I was just seeing who came in that's all, he shouted in reply. This only caused the occupants to laugh again. The three noticed how rich the hooded boy and were curious as to why he seemed so put off by their presence. Anko decided to tease the boy to try and get him to lighten up. Really, you were looking an awful long time to be just seeing who came in. You sure it wasn't something else? She purred as she reached forward for the top of his hood. Like how there is snake lady, he yelled as he slapped her hand away before she could touch his hood. The three paused as Anko's eyes narrowed at the redhead who was trying his best to ignore the other occupants. Ayame and Tucci saw how bad this was going to turn out. The three had completely forgotten about the ramen and sake they had ordered as their suspicious gazes turned towards the kid that frequented their shop. Civilians they could deal with, but ninja were something that was simply out of their league. What did you call me Gaki? growled Anko in a menacing tone of voice that promised pain if he didn't answer her correctly. Naruto felt the fear begin to rise up, but he quickly squashed it back down. He refused to show fear to anyone anymore no matter who they were. He knew he was in a bad situation, surrounded by shinobi by the looks of it, he knew he wouldn't be able to escape, so if he was going to get beat then might as well make it worth it. You heard me you perverted snake lady, he growled back shocking Anko and causing her friends to snicker when they heard him call her perverted. You smell like snakes and trees. How do you know what she smells like? Asked the brown-haired girl to his left. Naruto ended his short staring contest with Anko and turned to address the girl. Look I don't know I just do. She smells like snakes, you smell like dogs, and little miss red eyes over there smells like cinnamon. Now that that is out of the way can you humans leave me alone and let me eat my ramen in peace? Unfortunately he would not be left alone. Naruto cursed himself as he saw the suspicion and curiosity in their eyes increase. It was only a matter of time until these three found out who he was and then all hell would probably break loose. He tried to get up and leave the stand, but a hand on his shoulder stopped him dead in his tracks. He looked up into the red eyes of Kuranai as she asked him the question that three people were thinking, 
and the other three were dreading, Who are you? She asked, The Tooth Fairy. He replied with a smirk on his lips. Tucci and Ayame could only sigh and shake their heads as they watched Naruto dig a hole from which none would escape from for himself. Look here you little gaki, started Anko as she reached forward and grabbed the back of Naruto's hood to try and spin the kid around. Naruto jumped forward at the touch, inadvertently causing Anko to rip the hood of the cloak off. Silence descended upon the stand as Naruto's bright red hair, whisker marks, and fox ears were now out on display in their full glory. Naruto's body tensed up and he shut his eyes and cringed waiting for the beating to come. Tucci and Ayami would look back on the event as one of the funniest things they'd ever seen. Naruto would look back on it and wish he could erase that memory from everyone's mind. All hell broke loose, but not how Naruto expected. Oh my kami he's so kawaii! Screamed Hana as she launched herself over and glomped the petrified red head and started petting him. Naruto had been expecting something so much different than what he'd just got. He was expecting glares, shouts of hey it's the demon kid, and other various obscenities getting beat within an inch of his life, or even killed. Never in his wildest dreams did he think he was going to get attack hugged by an overexcited teenager while the rest of the occupants of the ramen stand nearly bowled over in laughter. Naruto's brain shut down. It took a few moments, but when his mind rebooted his face instantly took on a look of shock and horror as he took in his surroundings. He was sitting in the lap of Hana as she calmly stroked the top of his head, his ear lowered in content. To his further horror he realized that his tail was wagging slowly at her menstruations. One glance at the smirking faces of those around him, and he couldn't take it anymore. Let go of me lady. I am Naruto Uzumaki. Soon to be strongest ninja in the world. I will not be coddled like some lazy house cat, he shouted as he struggled desperately to escape the clutches of the brunette while the others simply laughed at him. I'm warning you. When I get out I'm gonna kick all of your asses. You do not understand the power that I hold. I am terror, I am the beast that stalks the night. Naruto's promises of death and destruction were immediately halted when a new sensation hit him. He felt the soft hands of Hana, whose lap he had been desperately fighting to get out of, stroking his cheeks. Naruto would be feeling the repercussion of this day for years to come. The first thing to note is that on Naruto's cheeks is his whisker marks, unknown to anyone at the time was the effect of stroking said whisker marks. The chatter from everyone else was silenced instantly as Naruto's face took on a dazed expression before he went completely limp and, to the shock of everyone else, began purring deeply. Kurinai, Anko, and Ayame tried to stifle their laughter. Anko actually having to catch herself from falling because of the laughter she was suppressing. Tucci didn't bother to hold it in and was laughing quite loudly at the red head. Hana in her shock had stopped stroking her captive's whiskers causing him to regain control of himself. Naruto looked around at the people and couldn't stop the anger that welled up in his chest. What the hell is wrong with you humans? He yelled angrily as he finally wrestled himself from the clutches of Hana and put some distance between the three. He knew that he shouldn't be this mad. Embarrassed? Yes. Annoyed? Absolutely. Ready to plot revenge? Without a doubt. However, everything that had happened in the past 30 minutes, combined with the fact that his house had burned down, what day it was, and how people usually reacted around him caused him to become extremely confused. That confusion led to fear, fear at not understanding why those three are being so nice, and then that fear led to anger, anger at them because they weren't acting like he thought they should. They should hate him like everyone else in this Kami forsaken village but so far they seemed to have no problem with him. What do you mean Naruto-kun? Asked Hana as she and her friends shared startled and confused glances. You three should hate me. You should despise me just like the rest of this stupid village. Why don't you huh? Why are you being so friendly? Are you just trying to trick me like all the others? He yelled at them with tears threatening to spill from his eyes. Why would we hate you Naruto? You haven't done anything wrong? Asked Kurinai trying to see where his anger was stemming from, being Chunin and above. All three knew about Naruto's status as demon container even though they'd never actually met the kid until now. They'd seen him around the village from time to time, scowling at everyone near him or running around to Kami knows where. It was pure coincidence they met him today, and silently agreed to try and learn more about the kid. However, it seemed like they just got sucked into a whole other situation. It doesn't matter, I'm a demon. Almost all you humans hate me because of it so don't you lie and act like you don't. I'd rather you hate me up front than try to get my hopes up. Just leave me alone damn it. Not giving anyone a chance to reply, Naruto turned and bolted out of the ramen stand, running off down the street at a surprising speed for his age. The trio was left standing in pure shock and confusion while the Ayame and Tuchi looked on sadly. They never meant to run the boy off, they never knew their actions would cause this. Tuchi saw the look on their faces and decided to clear up their confusion. It's not your fault, he said getting the attention of the trio. Naruto is, complicated. He's got issues trusting others. Why does he call himself a demon? 
and all of us humans like he isn't one himself? Asked Hana, you noticed eh? Well, Naruto has had an extremely difficult childhood. He's pretty much had to raise himself, and because of it he's extremely distrusting of others. The villagers didn't make it any easier, antagonizing him, belittling him, store owners refused to sell anything to him or made their prices so high he couldn't afford it. Hell, up until a year ago he was beaten almost weekly. The hospitals tried to poison him instead of treating him. The only people he has to support him in his life is me, my daughter and the Hokage since we've been here for him for years, and even we can only do so much to help him. The villagers have convinced the boy that he is the demon I know you know he carries, and nothing any of us have said can change his mind. W.Y. didn't he fight back? Yelled Hana, shaken from the tail. He can't, muttered Anko with a serious expression on her face. Why? Because that would be the death of him, explained Kurunai grimly. Exactly, said Anko as she began to further the explanation, a soft rage in her voice, knowing who he is, the minute he tried to fight back would be the moment his execution was assured. They already loathe him enough, they're just waiting for an excuse to kill him. He knows he can't do anything, so the only thing he can do is bear it. Various emotions played across the faces of the three Kunoichi. Kurunai was mostly sad, sad at the fact that the villagers could treat a little kid so horribly. The boy had done nothing to earn their ire, he was being punished for something out of his control. Anko was furious. She couldn't believe that the villagers could be so kami damned retarded. They convinced an impressionable young boy that he was a demon. They were the demons as far as she was concerned. They were treating him worse than they treated her after the snake bastard defected. It was taking all of her self-control not to let her snakes run rampant and teach the ignorant fools a lesson. Hana couldn't help the growl that radiated out from her throat. She wasn't that much older than him, and the fact that he had to deal with so much shit at an early age made her want to rip something apart. Fireworks could be heard exploding in the distance, a signal to all that the festival was starting, a signal that meant an event full of merriment and family fun for some. For others it was a tolling bell indicating impending doom. Ayame gasped, bringing the attention of all around her to herself. She pointed a clock mounted on the wall next to her and yelled, the festival started and Naruto is out in the village somewhere. If the villagers find him there's no telling what they'll do to him. Shock splashed across their faces before it was wiped away by looks of determination from the three Kunoichi. Not if I can help it, yelled Hana as she took off out the stand, closely followed by Anko and Kurunai. To say Naruto was scared was an understatement, he was completely terrified. The minute he ran from Michiraku's, he could feel he was being followed. That suspicion was confirmed when he glanced back and saw several villagers and even a few ninjas chasing after him. Suddenly, the sound of fireworks reached Naruto's ears and his stomach fell into his shoes. This wasn't good, this wasn't good at all. He turned a corner, skidding slightly before charging forward again, and was greeted with the sight of many irate villagers and shinobi who had just looked in his direction. Knowing that being stopped would be the death of him he poured on the speed and dashed straight at a ninja in his path. The ninja threw a kunai at him to try and stop him. Naruto's experience with this kind of thing aided him as he quickly dodged to the left causing the kunai to fly right past him as he continued forward. The shinobi growled in anger and aimed to kick the running boy. Naruto saw the attack coming and dropped himself to the ground and slid underneath the kick on his side before popping up behind the man and continuing running. He turned onto another road and paled when he saw the wall of people standing in front of him, from fence line to fence line. Thinking quickly, he dodging object after object being thrown and dashed over to the left fence. A few feet in front of the line of people Naruto jumped up and began to run up the side of the wall. It was only for a few steps, but it was enough to propel him over the wall of shocked people. The second his feet touched the ground he sped around another corner which led him to a part of the village he'd never ventured to. The buildings and fences began to dwindle as trees and shrubbery began to replace them. Up ahead he saw a large forest of trees, easily taller than the others surrounding them by four times and began to dash towards it thinking if there was a place to hide it was there. The shouts of his pursuers was growing louder and louder as he desperately sprinted towards the giant forest, his breath coming out in ragged gasps as he fought to keep his arms pumping. Pain erupted in the back of his left arm and a mangled cry escaped his lips. He glanced over his shoulder to see a kunai embedded into his arm. The sharp blade having separated the flesh on his arm allowing his blood to pour out onto the surrounding surfaces. He reached over and gripped the handle of the knife and ripped it out of his arm, blood oozing out of the wound as the blade sliced through more flesh on its exit and a roar of pain erupted from him. He threw the kunai back at the crowd in hopes that it would do something, but his hopes fell on deaf ears as the only reply he got to that was more screams for his blood and more projectiles being launched at him. The forest was getting closer and closer as he wheezed fighting the blackness that was eating at the edges of his vision as well as dodging the projectiles being launched his way. He dodged three more kunai, and a few rocks and sticks as he neared, 
pushing him closer and closer to the point of exhaustion. He cursed loudly when he finally got within 50 of the forest he was so desperate to get to, he realizing his running had all been for absolutely nothing. He stumbled to a stop as he reached out and grabbed onto the large fence that prevented his entry to the large forest to stop himself from collapsing. Spinning around, he was met with two kunai to his shoulders. Naruto let out a blood-curdling scream as the kunai sliced through his flesh and embedded themselves into the bones, blood steadily leaking down his white shirt staining it crimson. The mob slowed to a halt when they saw the boy stop running and fall to his back with his head right next to the chain-link fence, cheers erupting from them at the prospect that they finally caught the demon. One of the kunoichi separated from the group and began to walk towards the barely conscious red head, a large deranged smirk on her face. Nowhere left to run demon breath. Hokage be damned. We are ending you tonight. Shouts of approval and cheer erupted from the mob as they raised makeshift weapons, calling for the little kid's blood. Naruto felt what little hope he had left leave him. He was going to die right here and now. He would never be able to become the strongest ninja in history. He wouldn't be able to protect Tuchi-san or Ayame Nechan. He was going to die here, cowering as he waited for the final blow to end his existence. He tiredly raised his head to the kunoichi that held his life in her hands and mustering all the strength he had left glared at her for all he was worth. The kunoichi just chuckled and pulled a short sword out of a sheath on her back before she raised it high as the crowd roared its approval. Naruto refused to look away, if he was going to die then he was going to see it coming. Any last words before I end your pitiful excused of a life demon? Asked the kunoichi. Why yeah, said Naruto, his voice nothing more than a hoarse whisper, f fuck you. A look of rage crossed her face and with a mighty shout she brought the weapon down. The attack never connected. One moment Naruto was staring down the business end of a blade, and the next he was staring at the back of a tan trench coat. Shock appeared on his tired face as he watched Anko effortlessly block the woman's blade with a kunai, a snarl on her face. Kurina and Hana appeared on top of the fence, looking just as pissed off as Anko. You've got a lot of nerve swinging that blade at that boy, growled out Anko as she slowly pushed the blade back. What the hell are you doing? Screamed the female ninja as she applied more pressure to her blade, get out of the way so I can kill this, thing. That boy is not a thing yelled Hana as she leapt down next to the nearly unconscious redhead and began assessing the damage, I suggest you hold in your bitter comments or I'll be forced to remove your tongue. Naruto looked on in confusion, the recent developments pulling him from the brink of unconsciousness. Why were they protecting him? They hated him right? He was just a lowly demon, they shouldn't be protecting him. He was so used to people hurting him that beside the few people he'd come to appreciate more than anything else in the world he thought all humans were horrible, but in barreled these three. First at the ramen stand and then now, they made no attempts to hurt him and were going so far as to put themselves in danger in order to help him. W.Y.? He gasped out, a burning need to have this question answered visible in his eyes, Why are you h helping me? Kurin I leapt down and landed on the side of Naruto opposite to Hana, who was pulling out the kunai from the redhead's shoulders, shock leaving him unfeeling of the action. She laid a hand on the top of his head before she spoke, simple. You don't deserve the treatment you've had to deal with your entire life. We want to help you, so whether you like it or not you're stuck with us. Now sit back and get healed up, me and Anko are going to have a talk with these bastards. Took the words right out of my mouth Naichan. We're here for you now Naruto, said Hana as she flew through a few hand seals before her palms started glowing a bright green and she placed them over his shoulder wounds. You got that right. Sit back and heal Gaki, I still need to pay you back for the way you spoke to me at the ramen stand. For now I'll have to entertain myself with these assholes, said Anko as she let a playful grin cover her face. You can't be serious? You too, I used to look up to you too, she shouted at Hana and Kurunai, who'd stood up and began to make her way towards Anko and her, you two are just as bad as this snake bitch right here. The grin on Anko's face turned bloodthirsty as she suddenly sidestepped out of the way of the sword, letting the kunoichi's force make the girl stumble forward into her devastating kick. When it connected the crunch of bones was heard clearly by all as the girl flew back through the air until she crash landed in front of the mob, bouncing a few times as blood flew from her open mouth before she came to rest. The civilians in the mob began to back away, the sight of the three enraged kunoichi making them rethink their previous plan. However the ninja stepped forward, believing in the power of their numbers seeing as they outnumbered the two kunoichi four to one. The kunoichi that Anko had kicked stood slowly, her face contorted into a look of pure loathing as she pointed with her sword towards the defensive duo that stood in front of Naruto. Kill them. Kill them all. Naruto heard this and for the millionth time this day his heart leapt into his heart. There were so many of them, and the civilians had gained a backbone thanks to the large number of ninja. It was essentially two kunoichi versus a whole platoon of people. He grit his teeth as the anger inside of him began to grow, 
beating down the fear. This day had been an emotional roller coaster for him and he'd had enough. He was tired of being weak. Get up. He roared at himself mentally. He was tired of all the glares. Get up. He was tired of all the hate thrown his way. Let them feel my rage. He was tired of being scared all the time. And drown in fear. It was time for the hunted to become the hunter. Deep in the recesses of a sewer, behind the caged bars of a large cave, a large slitted red eye opened lazily and a dark chuckle echoed through the space. So his container was finally tired of being treaded upon? He could feel the power building inside of the boy, power never before seen by any in the world. A large vulpine leer spread across his face. It looks like things were about to get much more interesting. Naruto clenched his teeth, showing off his large canines, as he slowly pushed himself up into a sitting position much to everyone's surprise, and then they felt the killing intent. It was rolling off of him in waves so massive that it caused a few of the civilians to wet themselves in fear. The little fox boy grinned maliciously as he felt energy flow into him, his whisker marks darkened into thick black lines, his hair growing wilder and claws erupted onto his fingertips. He felt a stinging pain in his eyes that caused him to close them for a moment. When he opened them again Hana, Kurunai, and Anko all gasped at the sight of his eyes. The whites of his eyes were slowly turning black while at the same time his irises were bleeding to a dark blood red. That combined with his new feral look made him look like one scary motherfucker. As he looked at the mob of people with his new eyes something odd happened. He didn't know how, but he could see the illusion of a giant fox running rampant above them. SC shouted a shinobi from the mob, H he is a demon. L look at him. Naruto turned to the man as a wide leer stretched across his face as an idea, more like an instinct flared in his head. Afraid? He chuckled darkly sending shivers down everyone's spine, you should be. K kill it. S someone kill it before it eats us all. The mob took one step forward to subdue the four, and then another even that would chalk this birthday up as one of the most eventful ever happened. Naruto exploded. The area surrounding the four erupted into a giant ball of black smoke with burning embers swirling around in the cloud. Kurunai, Hana, and Anko looked around in confusion. That explosion should have killed them, but here they were perfectly fine not even five feet from the epicenter. Moments later the Hokage and the clan heads appeared nearby, the massive amount of killing intent alerting them that something was happening. Before he could question the mob the smoke from the explosion began to swirl around, slowly forming into something. The onlookers watched on in shock, and then fear as the smoke began to take shape. The embers in the cloud still flew around chaotically, but most had grouped together into a set of blazing red orbs. The smoke slowly coalesced, expanding and contracting as it slowly finished taking shape. Once the occupants saw what had formed, shocked and fear-filled shouts filled the area as they gazed upon the sight of a sixty-foot-tall, angry, Nine-tailed Kitsune, its tails lashing wildly behind it. It stood protectively over Kurunai, Anko, and Hana as it gazed down at the crowd with rage in its eyes. If that wasn't shocking enough, the golden chains that appeared and draped around the beast's neck back, arms, and tails were icing on the cake. Let it be known that on that day, an entire mob of civilians shit themselves at once. For a moment no one moved, the only motion coming from the lashing of the giant fox's tails. The beast lowered its head until it was just a few inches away from the front of the crowd, its rage-filled eyes connecting to all of their fear-filled ones, before it let out a deafening roar. The crowd instantly scattered as the air was filled with the terrified screams of civilians and ninja alike. The beast threw its head up and laughed, its booming demonic laughter drowning out all noise near it. The beast's laughter slowly turned from demonic to childlike as the smoke colossus slowly began to disperse into thin air. When the last of the smoke dispersed those that weren't around to see it were shocked to see Naruto Uzumaki standing there with drooped eyes that had reverted back to their normal blue state and a shit-eating grin on his face. He turned to Hana, the closest of the trio, and took one stumbling step forward before his exhaustion caught up with him. All the energy that had invigorated him minutes before left him, leaving him clinging to consciousness once again. He tumbled forward into her arms, surprise written clear across her face as, in the last vestiges of his consciousness, he looked up at her astonished face and his grin faded into a small genuine smile. Why you know, you, are red eyes, and the pervy, snake lady, aren't de that bad, for H humans, he whispered out before unconsciousness finally claimed him. Hana looked up and around at Gurunai, who still sported the same shocked look almost everyone there had, and Anko, whose shocked look was slowly forming into a massive grin to the Hokage and the rest of the council before her eyes rolled up into the back of her skull and she fainted, falling backwards onto the earth with the unconscious Naruto on top of her. The Hokage blankly looked from the two unconscious kids, to Anko and Kurunai, to the ninja council before he sighed and in a calm voice said, Will someone tell me what the fuck just happened? Hiruzen couldn't suppress the sigh that escaped his mouth as he entered the council room. 
while the ninja side of the council sat quiet enough, knowing that their questions will be answered in time, the civilians were practically screaming bloody murder. He knew this was going to happen, hell the civilians always did this when it pertained to a surrogate grandson, only this time they had a reason to shriek. He already spoke to Hana, Kurunai, and Anko on what had happened yesterday, but Naruto had still been unconscious so he hadn't been able to talk to him yet about him turning into a giant kitsune-shaped smoke avatar. That alone was reason enough to call a council meeting seeing as he knew there was no way Naruto should be able to do that. But add on to the fact that he manifested chakra chains too, and then proceeded to make an entire mob shit themselves and flee in terror. Well, he knew the paperwork was going to be massive. Ha's eyebrow began to twitch in irritation as he sat in his seat and the civilians continued to yell and bitch before he couldn't handle it anymore. His patience had been wearing thin of late. Will all of you shut the hell up so we can commence with this meeting? The key he released with his outburst was sufficient enough to silence the civilian council. Rubbing his temples he inhaled and began speaking again. We all know why we're here. This meeting is about one Naruto Uzumaki and the events that happened yesterday evening. The floor is open. That demon needs to be killed, shouted one civilian council member. It would be the last words he ever spoke. Hiruzen snapped his finger and pointed at the man who'd shouted, and before any of them could blink his head was between his feet. The civilians were shocked silent as blood gushed from the wound spraying onto all surrounding council members before Anbu took the core and disappeared. The Hokage turned his iron gaze towards the civilians and in a deceptively calm voice spoke, The law is still in place you know so you should refrain from calling him anything but his name. You've already done enough damage to him as it is. My patience with you lot is at an end, and don't think I've forgotten about that stunt you pulled earlier yesterday. Burning down the apartment I gave him. I already have the names of those responsible for organizing that little act and if you'd stop shrieking for a few minutes you'd notice you were down a few members. The ninja side of the council watched with amusement as their Hokage tore into the civilian council. Tsume was on the verge of tears from trying to hide her laughter along with Inoiki and Choza. Haishi and Shikaku had smirks on their faces, and Shibi was, well he was Shibi. It had been a long while since they'd seen their Hokage lose his legendary patience. Now unless you have something of importance to say get the hell out. The civilian council members were shocked silent as they processed the verbal assault that had been launched at them. After a few moments a timid hand was raised and all eyes were focused in on the owner of it. You are Hokage yes sir I was J just wondering if why you were going T to punish the boy? Asked the scared council member. Why would I do that? Asked the Hokage with confusion in his voice. H he released T the QB. And then nearly a day an entire crowd of civilians, civilians, spoke Aishi from his seat, his pale eyes sweeping over the member that spoke, that were trying their hardest to kill him. And the QB wasn't released, drawled out Shikaku, we all remember what being in the presence of that beast was like and that simply wasn't it. Plus not only was the kitsune in question a lot smaller than QB, but it was made of smoke. Last time I checked the demon fox was red and black. B but he still could have killed them, argued the civilian, but he didn't. The only thing he did was scare them off. He was well within control of himself. If that was QB then we wouldn't be sitting here right now, chuckled the Hokage, so no I will not punish Naruto for scaring away a mob of people who wanted him dead. If that is all then the civilians are dismissed. W what? You can't do that. We're part of the council, shouted another civilian council member. And I'm the Hokage, spoke Hiruzen, remember that my word is law in this village. You've been on thin ice ever since the orphanage incident two years ago and this just put a serious crack in it. The only reason you are still here is because I need a civilian council to help handle civilian affairs. If I have to clean house and get new members then so be it. Now, you are dismissed. The civilian side of the council begrudgingly got up and left the chamber, the hate and fear in their eyes clear as daylight. Once the last one left, the Sundaime Hokage couldn't help but let out a sigh and quietly mutter, I'm getting too old for this shit. Was that really necessary Hokage-sama? Asked Donzo, a small scowl on his face. Perfectly necessary, replied Iruzen in a tone that dared him to try and keep arguing, they are needed for civilian affairs only. This no longer has anything to do with them. Now, you were all there. What do you think? I'm still wondering where the kid got the ability to use smoke. Neither Kushina nor Minato had the ability to wield smoke. And the last clan that was able to use smoke release was killed off over 60 years ago, said Shikaku. True I was wondering the same thing, said the Hokage, it might be something to do with the QB, but we all know where the chakra chains came from. Yes it would appear that he has inherited that ability from his mother, spoke Haishi in a calm tone, he will make a strong shinobi one day. He does certainly have the makings of a strong shinobi, but I fear his mentality might make him a danger to those around him sighed Inoiki with his arms crossed over his chest. Hiruzen let out a sad sigh and replied, 
Yes he truly believes he is the demon that everyone calls him. High's trust in those around him is all but non-existent. It is despicable what this village has done to the boy, but if he doesn't trust others how can he become a shinobi? Our Xinan cells are built around trusting one's comrades. Asked Sumei. And what's to stop him from leaving the village once he's strong enough to leave on his own? Asked Shibi. The Hokage sat deep in thought. These were valid questions, questions he'd already asked himself. The only people Naruto truly trusted was him and the Ichirakus so it would be difficult for any cell he was put on to work together. He wasn't too much worried about him leaving the village, but the first question was posing as a problem. If he couldn't get the young Jin Shiriki to trust others then, a sly grin appeared on the old man's face as the solution to his problem appeared in his head. The other clan heads noticed the smile and returned it with one of their own, knowing their Hokage had a solution to the problem. I don't fear young Naruto would leave the village because the only people he cares about are here, but what Sumi asked is a true. If Naruto doesn't trust his teammates, then how can they be a team? What we need to do is slowly introduce him to others and have them gain his trust. And I have the perfect people to do it. The sound of his own purring is what woke up Naruto. As he ascended from the realm of unconsciousness he couldn't help the slow easy smile that spread across his face. He could feel someone stroking on his whisker marks, but in his sleep addled state he didn't react like he normally would, with shock and anger at anyone who dared to rub his cheeks. Instead, he simply pushed his face into the hands that were touching his whisker marks earning a symphony of snickering from round the room. He slowly opened his eyes, shutting them tight again when the harsh rays of light stabbed at his corneas. He pushed himself up into a sitting position. The stroking of his whisker marks ceased, and yawned widely as he rubbed his eyes. As he yawned he heard the distinctive shutter click of a camera. His eyes shot open now fully awake and for the first time his mind registered the fact that he wasn't alone. He looked to his left and his face immediately heat up as he saw the amused faces of Hana, Kurunai, and Anko, the latter holding up the camera he heard. Hana was sitting in a chair right next to his bed with a giant grin on her face while Kurunai and Anko were standing a little further away. There was a moment of silence as he locked eyes with the three of them before he spoke. The fuck are you all doing in my room? He asked curiosity and irritation clear in his voice. The smiles fell off of the three's face when they heard the redhead's question. Anko and Kurunai brought themselves closer to his bed and Hana stood up and reached out to his forehead. Naruto what are you talking about? You're in the hospital because you passed out last night after that whole fiasco. Don't you remember? Hana asked with concern in her voice as she placed her palm on his forehead. Naruto stiffened and swatted her hand away. The hell are you talking about dog girl? Why am I in the hospital? Did those humans catch me again? Stupid fucking ninjas making it hard to escape. He growled out to himself before he sighed in aggravation. Oh well, it's not like it's the first time this has happened. I'm just surprised none of the doctors have tried to poison me yet. Hana, Anko, and Kurunai flinched at the mention of poisoning. It wasn't that the doctors hadn't tried yet. If it wasn't for them showing up when they did, Naruto might not have woken up. The fox boy saw the flinch and growled knowing that his suspicions had just been confirmed. Yep knew it was too good to be true, he muttered, oh well, guess I should leave back to my apartment before they try again once you trio leave. Gaki, you really don't remember what happened last night? Your apartment being burnt down by angry villagers, meeting us at Ichirakus, the mob chase and that awesome smoke trick you pulled? Asked Anko. A confused look on her face. No, I don't remember, he yelled as he swung his legs over the edge of the bed he was laying on. What do you mean the villagers burned down my apartment? Naruto, calm down please, said Kurunai as she placed a hand on the redhead's shoulder, feeling as he tensed up from the contact. Unfortunately it's true, the Hokage told us that the villagers burned down the apartment you've been living in. Sorry, but you don't have a home to return to right now. Naruto groaned as his ears drooped and he placed his head in his hands. Fan-fucking-tastic. Now it's back to living on the streets where the chances of getting beaten are 90% higher. The three shared a sad look before Anko spoke again. A spur-of-the-moment idea in her head. Nonsense, you can live with me. Three heads spun and stared at Anko in varying levels of shock, hope, and disbelief. Hana and Kurunai because as long as they'd known Anko they'd never known her to be this nice, let alone open her home to anyone that wasn't them too or the Hokage. Naruto was really hoping it was a genuine thing and not just a prank, but his harsh upbringing didn't lead him to trust easily. He'd just met these three today or at least that's what he thought. According to them they'd met yesterday and from the way they acted around him they seemed to look at him as a friend. In the end the skeptic and him won, and he leapt off the bed and tried to dash to the door. Keyword, tried. Since he'd been unconscious for around 16 hours as soon as his feet touched the ground his legs gave out from under him and he face planted on the floor skidding to a halt just in front of the door. The three ran over to Naruto and helped him up, 
noting the dazed expression on his face. Naruto are you okay? Asked Kuranai. Come on Gaki, say something, yelled Anko. This isn't good. What if he gets brain damage? Worried Hana. Naruto shook his head, ridding himself of the cobwebs that had taken up residence in his brain. Memories of the past 24 hours surfaced causing the little fox-eared boy to clutch his head in pain and whimper. He remembered looking at his burning apartment. He remembered getting his stuff from his little hiding place, which would explain why he had it now. He remembered meeting these three at Ichirakus. Anko, Kuranai, and Hana if his memory was correct. He remembered being chased up to a giant forest. He remembered turning into a giant fox made out of smoke and burning embers. He also remembered how these three defended him against the mob. A myriad of emotions rolled across his face ranging from shock, to sadness, to anger, and finally settling on a small, genuine smile. He let them help him up, before he turned and looked up at them. His face screwed up as he internally debated on what to do next. His first thought was to just pretend he didn't know them still and move on with his life but some small part of him was keeping himself from leaving. He sighed and then relented. If he was honest with himself he was tired of being on his own all the time. He wanted friends, but everyone in the village seemed to hate him. Oh well, if they're joking around and actually hate him, well, it wouldn't be the first time, thanks you guys. I kinda, just remembered everything, and like I said before, well you all are alright, he said with a cheery lilt in his voice, you three are the only ones besides the Hokage and the Ichirakus that has ever tried to defend a demon like me. Y'all aren't like other humans, Hanachan, Kurunai-san, pervy snake lady. Anko growled as her friends tried unsuccessfully to hide their laughter and Naruto just grinned up at her. Balling up her fists she smacked him on the top of his head right between his ears, earning her a pained yelp from the fox boy. The name's Anko, Gaki, not pervy snake lady, she yelled in annoyance. Keep calling me that and I'll beat you into a pulp. Kami, did you have to hit me so hard? He yelled back at her, oblivious to the amused stares of Kurunai and Hana, and I will call you pervy snake lady until you stop being one. If that's the kind of naming system we're going off of then I guess I'll call you Minigaki since you're so short. Retorted Onko. Naruto could feel his eyebrow twitch involuntarily and his teeth clench in anger. There were two things that Naruto hated to be made fun of about, his fox features and his height. He knew he was short compared to even kids his age. It was something that always bothered him and using that as a taunt was a surefire way to take him from 1 to 11 on the 10 point anger scale. Just like now. Who the hell you calling mini you perverted snake smelling bitch? I'm not short I'm average height. I'll rip your arms out of their sockets and use them to beat you into an early grave, roared a flailing Naruto as a completely shocked Kurunai latched onto the back of his shirt to keep him from attacking Onko. Who the fuck do you think you're calling a bitch you short piece of shit? I'll RIP the ears from the top of your skull and feed them to my snakes. Then once they're done with it I'll cut you up so bad that no one will recognize your body, roared back an equally enraged Anko who was barely being restrained by a struggling Hana, Naruto's threat bringing forth her anger. You wouldn't last two seconds against me. And snakes are stupid. Guys calm down, said Gurunai, trying to be the voice of reason. Snakes are not stupid you little shit. And you wouldn't even last a whole second against me. You barely come up to my waist you midget. Guys can you just, said Kuranai before she was cut off, her irritation growing. Bitch. Guys. Short shit. Had the two been in their right state of mind, they would have noticed the pissed off look on Kuranai's face. With an aggravated sigh she hoisted Naruto up by the back of his shirt and spun him around so she could look him in his eyes. Naruto was about to yell at her too, but when he saw the rage in her eyes he paled as his ears lowered instinctively and he wisely shut the fuck up. Sit. Without hesitation. Naruto was sitting on his knees in the center of the room facing Kurunai, a look of complete fear on his face. Haha ha, not so tough now are you show began Anko before she too was subjugated to Kurunai's death glare. Anko's skin took on the same pale coloration of Naruto's and in a flash she was sitting next to the fox boy, the same look of fear on her face. Hana couldn't help the shiver that traveled down her spine as Kurunai glanced her way before turning towards the other two, the look of calm rage still on her face. Apologize, commanded Kurunai. The tone of her voice showing clearly that she was not to be disobeyed. Why do I H have to? S she's the one T that. Both of their attempts at speaking were silenced by the increasing intensity of Kurunai's glare. Apologize, she commanded once more while she cracked her knuckles, daring the two to disobey her again. The two whimpered and latched onto each other as they commenced to apologize. I'm sorry Anko chan Why you're not a B bitch at all? You're S such a delightful H human. He stammered out nervously as he clung to a shivering Anko. P thank you ga Naruto. I'm sorry I called why you short. You're a sea cool kid. Replied Anko in a nervous whisper as she clung to an equally shaking fox boy. Hana tried to beat back the growing laughter inside of her, 
but the sight of Nardo and Anko cowed like that by Kurinai was enough to breach her defenses and a snicker escaped her. Kurinai slowly turned and aimed her glare at the young Inusuka who promptly joined the other two on the floor cowering. This was the sight that the Hokage walked into, a now smirking Kurinai standing over a terrified Anko, Naruto, and Hana. He paused for a moment to let the scene sink into his mind before he let out a sigh. What pray tell is going on here? He asked alerting the room's occupants to his presence. Naruto reacted first flashing across the room in a blur to behind the Hokage. She's evil Oji-san. She made me apologize to the snake, Aranko when she was the one who insulted me. He hissed from behind Hiruzen, refraining from calling Anko by his nickname when Kurunai glared at him again. You called me a bitch you little. Began Anko before Kurunai's glare bored into her silencing her. His gaze switched to Hana who just shook her head and glanced at Kurunai. The Hokage then turned to Kurunai and spoke. Nice job getting Naruto to apologize. I could almost never get him to do that, he said with a chuckle in his voice, ignoring the betrayed look given to him by Naruto. It was easy Hokage-sama. Those two are just too like for their own good, Kurunai replied, I ought to teach him some manners, but knowing him they'll just bounce off of him. Oh you'd teach him would you? Said the Hokage as he smirked lightly, ignoring the disgruntled shout from the fox boy hiding behind him. The trio saw the glint in their Hokage's eyes and knew something was up. Hiruzen crouched down to eye level and turned to face Naruto. He looked into the boy's eyes and couldn't help but smile at the sight. His blue eyes had lost some of the hate they held, clearly thanks to these three. He reached up and pat the boy's head earning him a grin and tail wag. What do you think of these three Naruto? Asked the wizened Hokage, getting curious glances from the rest of the room's occupants. Why do you want to know that Hokage GG? Asked Naruto. His head cocked to the side slightly as he tried to figure out the reason his grandfather was questioning him. Just humor me, replied Hiruzen. Naruto looked down for a few seconds, a myriad of emotions flashing across his face before he looked back up. Well one of them is a pervy snake lady, another is completely terrifying, and the other keeps rubbing my whisker marks. They keep pestering me and invading my personal space, and it's honestly kinda annoying, began Naruto as the trio looked sad and angry at Naruto's words. But their moods quickly switched for the better as he continued, a light embarrassed blush on his cheeks as he did. But they're a lot of fun to be around. They're really nice humans, and haven't tried to hurt me at all even though I know they could. They even defended me against that mob yesterday. Nobody besides you and the Ichirakus have ever done that. Smiles were on everyone's faces as Naruto spoke, none bigger than the Hokage's. He could tell no matter how much the little fox boy didn't want to admit it that he liked the three. So, what do you think about them? He asked again. Well I uh, stammered Naruto as he rubbed the back of his neck with a reluctant look on his face, the blush resting on it showing how unused to this he was, I uh, I think they're. You leave five I guess, exclaimed Anko with a grin on her face that was mirrored by Hana and Kurunai. Naruto spotted indignantly as his blush intensified before he spun around and glared at Anko. S shut up. I do not, he yelled back only getting amused giggles in reply. Hana walked over and enveloped Naruto in a hug before she began petting his head. A smirk on her face. You like us don't you Naruto? She sang as his entire face lit up. I idd do not. He argued trying to glare at Hana, but the wagging of his tail and blush on his face took away any and all intimidation from the look. Say it or we'll rub your whiskers until you do, exclaimed Hana as she pointed back to Kurunai and Anko who looked ready to make good on the threat. Naruto's eyes widened in horror before he finally relented. Fine fine I do. I like you guys alright. Just don't touch my whisker marks. The Hokage couldn't help the laugh that escaped him as he watched the three interact. He knew they'd become good friends from the way the three talked about him last night when he spoke to them about the incident. Speaking of, it was time to set his plan in motion. Well I heard Anko say she would let you live with her before, since you don't really have anywhere to stay you can take her up on her offer, said the Hokage, getting Naruto's attention. The boy in question scrunched up his face in concentration for a few moments before he looked up at Anko and said, I don't want to get her in trouble though. What if the villagers try to burn her house down too? He replied. Hiruzen smirked slightly and said, Don't worry. The villagers wouldn't dare go anywhere near Anko's house. Naruto had a skeptical look on his face as he replied, Well, if you say so. Why not, it beats living on the streets. Good, chuckled the Hokage before he turned his attention to Anko, Kurunai, and Hana, now I have a mission for you three. Since he's living with Anko now then it makes this much easier. A mission sir? What kind of mission? Asked Kurunai, curiosity dominating her tone. A four year mission. I want you three to teach Naruto the basics about being a shinobi and anything else you deem useful. What? Isn't he going to be starting the academy in a few weeks? Asked Hana. Originally yes he was, 
but due to recent developments, replied Hokage implying Naruto's smoke powers and chakra chains, the council and I think it's best if he learns to control his powers before he joins the academy. With you three helping him should you so choose to accept this mission he should have it down in no time. Naruto couldn't care less that he wasn't going to the academy anymore. It's not like any of the human spawn there would try and befriend him, and he sure as hell wasn't going to try to be theirs. He looked over at the trio as they sat deep in thought. While they thought he decided to get some questions that had been nagging him answered. Hokage Gigi, how did I do that smoke thing last night anyways? Honestly, I'm not sure Naruto, he said to the shock of the young redhead. The ability you exhibited was similar to a Kakei Genkai that an old clan of Konoha used to have, but they died off over 60 years ago. Know how you gained that ability is a mystery to me. Is it because I'm the QB? That got everyone's attention. W what are you? Sputtered the third before he was cut off by the red head. I kinda figured it out yesterday when I turned into a giant nine-tailed fox. I mean the humans always called me a demon, and I've got fox ears, whisker marks, a tail, and my senses are a lot better than most people's. I've always suspected, but yesterday kinda just made it clear to me, said Naruto. Naruto you are not the QB, you are its jailer. It is sealed inside you, but that doesn't make you it, spoke Haruzin. I'm sorry for not telling you but I wanted you to live a normal life. Well fat lot of good that did me Hokage Gigi, but it's alright. I always knew I was a demon, guess now I know which one. An awkward silence filled the room as the four of them absorbed what Naruto just said. They knew he thought of himself as a demon. But to think he was the QB, the terror of Konoha, was on another scale. They looked at the red-headed fox boy as he looked deep in thought. He really didn't deserve the life he was given. Catching each other's gazes a silent message was passed, they were going to make his life better. Wait so if the smoke was some weird byproduct of the QB, then where did the golden chains and the eye thing come from? Asked Naruto, breaking the silence. Wait, began the San Daime, what do you mean I thing? Well yesterday when I looked at the mob after I got super angry my eyes started to burn. When I looked at the humans I could see the silhouette of the QB floating above them, explained Naruto to the shock of everyone else. Naruto, I assume you know how to channel your chakra right asked the Hokage, internally sighing in relief having diverted the group's attention away from the chakra chains. Even if he knew of the QB, he wasn't ready to know about his parentage. Getting a nod from the boy he continued, can you push some into your eyes? Naruto looked down sheepishly and his ears drooped slightly. I I don't know, I'm not very good at chakra manipulation no matter how hard I try, he muttered, I can't even get the exercises in the books I stole down. Naruto's fear spiked as he felt Kuran eyes glare aim at him. What do you mean books you stole? She asked sweetly, you should have just gone to the library and checked them out instead of stealing them. He gulped and replied, I tried. But that stupid human wouldn't let me in. So I decided to uh, borrow what I needed. Her eyes softened before she reached down and ruffled his hair. Sorry for getting all angry Naruto, and don't worry. You won't have to steal anything else. Naruto nodded his head with a smile, though if truth be told, he kind of liked stealing things. He didn't know why, but he kind of got a rush from sneaking around and taking things out from other people's noses. Back to the topic at hand, continued the Hokage, it doesn't take much to just push it to your eyes Naruto. Try it. Naruto looked around the room and after receiving confirming nods he decided to try it. He clapped his hands together, as if praying, and felt down within himself, in his core, the swirling power of his chakra. He pulled as gently on the energy as he could, only trying to get the smallest amount possible to push to his eyes. Imagine his and everyone else's surprise when chakra spiraled out from him wildly like a mighty drill. The others were having a hard time picking their jaws up off the floor. Naruto was putting out Chunin level chakra. Wogaki, tone it down a bit, gaped Anko. What are you talking about? I'm not pulling all that hard, he said with a confused look on his face. Well no wonder your control is so horrible, you've got as much chakra as a Chunin, exclaimed Kuranai. Really? Awesome. He grinned. Okay now I'll focus it on your eyes, instructed the Hokage, and then watched as Naruto followed his orders. The four of them watched in awe as the redhead's eyes shifted from their normal vibrant blue to blood red with Black's clearer. Naruto looked around and noticed how much sharper everything looked. It was almost as if everything had slowed down slightly, and brightened at the same time. Remembering the fox he saw above the villagers' heads he glanced up above the heads of those present. A confused look made its way to his face. He could just see a vague outline above their heads, but not enough to make out anything. Why couldn't he see what was above their heads? The Hokage saw where Naruto's gaze was aimed and asked, what are you looking at Naruto? Remember how I said I could see the silhouette of QB over the villagers' heads? Well I was trying to see if I could see something above you guys' heads but whatever it is I can't see it, he explained, 
Also everything seems brighter and slower. I can see a little clearer and farther too. The Hokage nodded, filing away that information for later. Okay that's enough Naruto you can stop now, he said before Naruto's eyes switched back to their original state. We'll have to figure out just what those eyes of yours do as the years go on. For now I think it's best if you go and get acquainted with your new home. I have duties to attend to, he explained, his eye twitching as Onko, Naruto, and Hana snickered at him. What? Asked Kurunai, wondering what got them to laugh. He said duty, explained Naruto with a fanged smirk on his face, getting the other two to snicker again. The Hokage and Kurunai just sighed and shook their heads at the three before Haruzen turned and left down the hall he came in. Kurunai turned towards the three and spoke, Well this has been an eventful afternoon. I'm going to go home and plan for what I'm going to teach Naruto. See you guys tomorrow. Naruto, Anko, and Hana waved as Kurunai disappeared via sunshine. Naruto turned and looked up at Anko. Where do you live anyways? He asked, curious. Yeah Anko, you never would tell me where your house was. You just laughed and evaded the subject, said Hana as she looked over at her older friend. Anko couldn't keep the smirk off of her face as she replied while tousling Naruto's hair much to his displeasure. We actually got quite close to it yesterday. Grab on I'll take us there. The two took one of Anko's hands and disappeared out of the hospital before reappearing moments later while Naruto ran down the hall, leaving the two with confusion evident on their faces. Their confusion mounted as a few crashes and screams were heard down the hall before Naruto ran back in with a giant fox-like grin on his face. When he met their questioning gazes he simply replied, It was a going away present. We should probably leave before they get here. Anko gave him a look that said he would be explaining later before grabbing his hand and teleporting them away to their destination. When they reappeared Naruto got a confused look. They were right back where he scared off those villagers yesterday. The clearing of someone's throat got his attention and he turned to see Anko with a grin on her face and a pale Hana as she looked at the giant forest he saw yesterday. Well Gaki say hello to your new home, shouted Anko as she pumped a fist into the air. Anko how the fuck can you stand living here? Asked a still pale Hana. What? It's just a forest. Doesn't seem that bad, said Naruto still confused. Anko just turned to him and gave a sinister smirk that sent a shiver down Hana and his spines. He didn't know why, but he felt like he just said something that he shouldn't have. He didn't know how right he was. Hana sighed contently as she leisurely made her way through the forest of death during the first sunrise of the weekend. The early morning sun was warming her as she followed the familiar path into the forest heart. Her dogs, the Homer triplets, were trotting alongside her, playfully nipping at her and each other or sniffing out their trail. Over the past four years she'd grown taller slightly and more womanly. Her outfit stayed the same more or less, though sometimes she forewent the tan jacket for a modified flak jacket. She always loved mornings like these. Mornings that are quiet, serene, and tranquil. No silly missions to go on, no rowdy clan members to deal with. It was just her, her dogs, a silent forest path, and boom. Get back here and take your punishment like a man you short piece of shit. Not a chance in hell you crazy snake bitch. Hana let out a silent sigh as she straightened herself up as the last tremors of the earth died down and the sound of a giant snake hissing filled the air. Most people would be freaking out and scratching their heads at the violent outbursts that she just heard, but seeing as she had four years to get used to it, it didn't even faze her anymore. Hana just continued along the small path that she was walking along, ignoring the further outbursts and explosions that echoed through the air until she came along a small clearing with a giant tree in the middle of it. There was nothing remarkable about the tree, it looked like all the other trees in the forest, until you looked up. Snug up in the giant branches that made up the tree's canopy sat a large tree house. The tree house had been made by the group for Naruto to live in, refusing to let him just sleep on the floor or on a branch even though he was extremely used to doing so. It took them a little over a month to build, being large enough to house all of them at one time with each and every person having their own bedroom. Anko had taken to sleeping there a few weeks after it was finished and has been living there ever since. Hana let a small smile crawl across her face as she gazed up at the building she helped create, the sounds of arguing and hissing growing louder behind her. Hana didn't know how the two could be so energetic at 6 in the morning, but they somehow managed to pull it off for the past 4 years. She looked back in the direction of the arguing siblings, as they along with one of Anko's snake summons entered the clearing clearly pissed and ignoring her presence. I hope you've learned your lesson, you brat. Growled Anko as she tried to bore a hole in Naruto's face with her glare. She was covered in scratches and scuff marks from her and Naruto's early morning romp in the woods, but nothing serious. Besides getting a little taller and filling out more, Anko looked pretty much the same as she did four years ago. There was no lesson to be learned because you're dead fucking wrong, yelled Naruto back at her as he picked leaves out of his shaggy, 
spiked crimson hair, covered in bruises and slowly healing cuts that were dripping blood, he'd changed the most out of them all. Whereas before he was scrawny and malnourished, the years of intense training and eating right had done wonders for him. He'd filled out, his body looking more like a ninja his age should. Unfortunately for him, despite all the changes he was still short for his age, something that Onko and Hana teased him mercilessly about. The four years of isolation helped alter his appearance. His face had taken on a more feral appearance, accentuated by his now mid-back length hair, slitted cerulean eyes, and fang that tended to poke out of his mouth. His attire was simple, consisting of black boots, white onbu style pants, matching gloves, and a red sleeveless trench coat with black entrails. Hana snickered as she watched the two, finally gaining their attention. Oh hey Hana, said Onko with a smile as she disummoned her snake. Didn't notice you there. Continued Naruto as he rubbed the back of his neck with a grin on his face. Hana shook her head and addressed the two at once. What are you two arguing about this time? That seemed to be the wrong question to ask because the tension that had dissipated at them recognizing her came back full force as the two began glaring at each other again. This pervy snake lady had the audacity to say that Dango was better than Ramen when clearly there is no way in hell that that is true, shouted Naruto as he waved his arms angrily in Anko direction. She should be burned at the stake for such a thought. The one that needs to be burned at the stake is you, you damn gaki for even daring to think that your silly ramen could even compare to such a heavenly treat such as Dango. Replied Anko in an indignant shout. You wanna fight about it you old lady? Who the fuck you calling old lady you fucking munchkin? Get your ass over here so I can pound you into the dirt. Naruto wasted no time in launching himself forward, a red and black blur as he sped towards Anko, smoke and glowing hot embers trailing after his raised fists. He leapt into the air and threw a haymaker at Onko who sidestepped the attack, kicking him in the back as he flew by. The kick was accompanied by several pops as it propelled him forward towards a tree at the edge of the clearing. He spun in the air and clapped his hands together gathering chakra in his arms. Before he impacted the tree he thrust his arms out at the ground, and golden chains flew from his wrists. The chains burrowed into the earth halting his momentum before he yanked hard on the chains shooting himself back towards the snake mistress. He detached the chains from the earth and swung them around his arms into makeshift gauntlets before smoke started to gather in his palms. He thrust his palms out again. But instead of chains balls of superheated smoke shot forward at high speeds. Being the high class special jonin she was, Anko easily began weaving in and out of the attacks, the balls of smoke impacting the ground leaving small circles of burnt grass. He landed in a roll a few feet in front of his surrogate sister and, not skipping a beat, when he rolled to his feet he lashed out with the chains again, bringing the one on his right hand down in a vicious overhead Arkansas. Again, Anko sidestepped the attack and quickly closed the gap between them. She lashed out with a flurry of punches and kicks leaving Naruto scrambling to dodge the high-speed attacks. He was doing fine at first, but it was a tiny slip that would be his downfall. As he barely dodged a knee to his solar plexus, he didn't notice the small snake that snuck up behind him. His heel caught on the side of the snake knocking him off balance, and then Anko knocked him on his ass with an uppercut to the gut that sent him soaring for a few seconds. Anko flicked her hands down and several kunai and shuriken fell from her sleeve into her waiting hands. She flung them at the wind at Naruto as he shakily stood. His eyes widened as he saw the attack coming. Smoke started to gather around his arms again and with a growl he thrust his palms down at the ground under him causing an explosion of smoke that launched him into the air, effectively dodging the projectiles. Anka launched several more shuriken and kunai at him as he rose into the sky. Most other ninjas would be forced to defend or die in this situation, as they'd have no means of dodging. Naruto was in most other ninjas. Seeing the deadly projectiles, he thrust his palms to his left causing a small explosion of smoke near his palms knocking himself to the side as he began to descend from the air. Gathering his arms in front of himself he began throwing punches. The smoke on his arms reacted, launching balls of smoke at his grounded opponent forcing her to dodge. While she dodged exploding smoke balls Naruto landed with a sideways skid as he caught his breath. He growled lowly at the situation. While it was definitely true that he was way stronger than he had been before, he knew Anko was taking it extremely easy on him. If she wanted to, she could wipe the floor with him, and that pissed him off to no end. Having dodged the last smoke ball, the snake mistress turned and locked eyes with Naruto, the deranged smile on her face widening at the sight of him. You already lost once today Gaki. Do you want to make it too? Why don't you just admit that Dango is better than ramen? She taunted. Not a chance in hell snake lady. You got lucky earlier, but now is the time I defeat you. He replied with a similar grin on his face. Hana just shook her head and laughed at the two's interaction. Those two were too alike for their own good. It was no wonder that after a while the two just kind of adopted each other and became siblings. They interacted like siblings enough, always arguing, fighting, 
playing pranks on each other and together, training together, and verbally abusing each other, but in the end the two gave each other the love they were denied for most of their childhoods. Hell, Naruto's personality greatly resembled Anko's, and don't even think about their smiles, both just vicious and bloodthirsty as the other. If it wasn't for how different they looked from each other, they could pass as actually blood family. The two let loose a battle cry and charged at each other, Naruto's fists smoking and kunai and Anko's, but before the attacks could connect a loud pop was heard and a large puff of smoke appeared in between the two. Both instantly paled at the sight of it, knowing who was in the middle of the cloud, but they were too close to stop in time. Before they could slow down and get out of the way the smoke cleared and there stood Kurunai in all her glory, arms crossed and an irritated look on her face. Quick as a flash she unfolded her arms and smashed her fists onto the top of both the dueling sibling skulls, sending them crashing into the dirt. She looked over at Hana and her irritation disappeared as she gave her friend a friendly wave which was returned. Kurunai's attention switched back to the two roughhousers on the floor next to her, and irritation quickly reclaimed its place on her face. She reached down and grabbed both of them by the backs of their jacket collars, and then lifted them up so they were eye level with her, both freaking out trying to figure out a way out of this situation. Please, tell me why you two are fighting, asked Kurunai in an overly sweet tone of voice as her gaze shifted from Naruto to Anko, after I specifically told you two last night to get a good night's sleep and not to fight today. The two couldn't be sweating harder if they tried. The two lived in a forest where the flora and fauna constantly tried to kill them. They lived with the stuff of nightmares but none of them came close to being as terrifying as Kurunai. Naruto glanced over at Hana hoping for aid in his time of need, but all he received in return was an amused chuckle and a shoulder shrug. Well you see, I did get a good night's sleep, began Naruto, his ears twitching as he desperately tried to think of an excuse, so well in fact that when I woke up I had too much energy. Anko Nechan was helping me get rid of the excess with training. Anko nodded her head vigorously in agreement as Kurunai accusatory gaze shifted over to her. Oh is that so? Asked Kurunai in that same sweet tone before she turned to the chuckling Hana, Hana, my little Atoto wouldn't be lying now would he? Hana's heart speed up when Kurunai's gaze turned in her direction. Now there was two things she could do right now. She could cover for Naruto and Anko and then face Kurunai's wraith, or fess up and tell Kurunai the truth. She spared a glance at the hopeful faces being sported by Naruto and Anko and knew exactly what she should do, but her gaze made contact with Kurunai's and the look she was given promised pain. They're lying. She shouted to Naruto and Anko's horror, they fought twice over which was better, Dango or Ramen. Looks like the fear of Kurunai overrode her desire to help. Kurunai gave the Inuzuka a sweet smile and replied, Thank you Hana, then her smile shifted back towards the two in her grasp, sending shockwaves of fear down their spines, as for you two. The fear peaked in both of them as they contemplated with morbid fascination what Kurunai might do to them. What if she mounts our butts on her wall? Thought the young redhead. Please don't be 40 lashes with a wet noodle. Last time was bad enough. I don't think I can ever live that down. Dreaded Anko. Then at the same time, the worst possible thing came to their minds. What if she makes me be nice to people? The two were knocked out of their worried musings when Kur and I released them and they unceremoniously dropped to the floor. Your punishment is you have to have to take me and Hana shopping later, said Kur and I as she began walking over towards the treehouse. That's it? Asked a confused Naruto, not seeing the terrified look on Anko's face. What kind of punishment is that? Oh one of the worst kind Gaki. Anko shuddered. That's for later though, for now you have to get ready Naruto, said Kurunai. Ready for what? Asked Naruto, his tail wagging in curiosity. Don't you remember? We've been telling you for weeks now, said Hana, it's time you start going to the academy, like we promised the Hokage. Naruto's tail stopped wagging as he digested this new information. He had to go to the academy, he had to go to the academy. That means he had to leave the forest his home, and, talk to people. He didn't want to talk to people. He was fine just where he was, with his sisters and best friend Hana. Looking at Naruto the three couldn't help but laugh at the completely terrified look on his face. The laughter knocked him out of his stupor, and for a moment he thought about making a mad dash for freedom. Hana ruined that plan when she walked over and pulled him into a tight embrace. Calm down Naruto it'll be alright. It's just one year of school, she chuckled from over him missing the light dusting of a blush on his whisker-marked cheeks, if you promise not to maim anyone, then I'll treat you to ramen, okay? Anko and Kurunai didn't miss the look on his face and couldn't help but grin at his embarrassment. Even after all these years, he still got embarrassed by physical contact that didn't pertain to training. It gotten even worse thanks to a little thing called puberty. F fine. Just hell let go of me. He agreed as he squirmed about in her arms. Hana smiled and ruffled the top of his hair, 
unknowingly making his tail wag and him to blush even harder before he turned and dashed up the tree into his home, quickly followed by a chuckling duo and a completely oblivious Hana. The third Hokage sighed as he listened to the council, or rather the civilian side, squabble on in protest at what was going to occur today. He knew they would, he's known they would ever since the day he decided this, it didn't make the headache any less terrible though. Enough. Calm down all of you, he shouted with a burst of killing intent, effectively shutting everyone up, now, care to tell me why you all are so against Naruto joining the academy? Hokage, sir, that boy is a danger to the rest of the kids in his class, shouted a random civilian. Yes, he's been living in the forest of death for the past three years. There's no telling how bloodthirsty he is now, shouted another. He was wild enough before, who knows the kind of havoc he can wreak now. Hiruzen's droll stare drifted in the direction of the ninja side of the council. He could see they were just as tired of the civilians ranting as he was. He wanted nothing more than to kick them out of the meeting, but since this actually involved civilians, or rather their children, he had no choice but to let them attend and listen to them whine. He pulled his gaze back to the angry civilians and decided that he'd heard enough. I assure you that Naruto is no danger to any of your children so long as they don't provoke him first. While it is true that Naruto has been living in the forest of death for the past three years, he has been under the careful watch of three of my most trusted shinobi explained the Hokage to the civilians, putting some of them at ease, they have reported nothing of concern about him, so your fears of him wreaking havoc on the poor unguarded civilian populace of the village is unwarranted. Naruto will be attending the academy for a final year of shinobi training and that is final, but Lord Hokage what if, that, is, final, growled out the third Hokage, this meeting is over. With that the gathered council members, civilian and ninja alike, began to make their way out of the chamber until it was just the Hokage. Tsume, and Haishi. Once everyone else had vacated the building Tsume turned and addressed the third fire shadow. Lord Hokage, I do not doubt your judgment on him going to the academy, but is it really wise to put him in a classroom with all of the clan heirs and Iruka? You know some of those kids are, well you know how they are, and you know how Iruka feels about the QB. I agree Lord Hokage, added Haishi, not to mention my daughter is in that class and, well you know how. Special she is when it comes to the redhead. The Hokage couldn't fight the grin that arose on his face as he replied, I understand you're worried Tsume, but that class is honestly the best place for him to go. Iruka may not like the fox, but he won't let it cloud his judgment, and Haishi I know very well how, special your daughter is, like a spitting image of her mother. Honestly if he befriends anyone in that classroom I think it would most likely be her, and a meeting between the two would only benefit them. Besides it should be rather, Interesting. The two glanced at each other and came to a silent agreement. If their Hokage saw no worry in it then it was probably alright, though Haishi couldn't shake the worry that had wormed its way into his gut. Why did he feel like today was going to bring him a major headache? A now cleaned up Naruto's senses were in overdrive as he took a few tentative steps outside of the gate that blocked off the forest of death. It would be the first time he'd left his home in three years. He didn't even leave to visit Ayame and Tuchi, something that saddened him still but he refused to be in the presence of the people who wanted him dead. He just could bring himself to do it, even if it was for two of the most important people to him. Now, however, he had no choice. He had to come out whether he wanted to or not, but he'd be damned if they attacked him again. They didn't have to like him, but they would fear him. It'll be alright Naruto. We've got your back, stated Hana as she stepped out from behind him. Yeah, agreed Onko as she and Kurinai also stepped out from behind him to stand beside him. If anyone tries anything I'll feed them to my snakes. Kur and I rolled her eyes at her friend's antics, but silently agreed to take action should anyone try to harm her surrogate little brother. Naruto smiled slightly and nodded before he dashed forward. The forest of death was a little ways away from the populated area of the village so they would run there to make the journey quicker. To Naruto, the run was over way too quickly as they stopped on one of the main roads of the village. Civilians instantly took notice of his presence, and the whispers he remembered all too well reached his sensitive ears. Look it's the demon brat. Oh my Kami. It's back. I thought it had died three years ago. Great, that trash is back in our midst. Naruto did not like what he was hearing. He may have just grinned and bared it three years ago, but this was a new him. He was not going to be anyone's bullet monkey anymore. He caught the eyes of one of the villagers whispering, a middle-aged man with graying hair and growled low and menacing while he pushed a little chakra to his eyes causing them to turn from their normal cerulean blue with white sclera to crimson red with black sclera. Immediately everything around him grew clearer and sharper. He focused on the top of the man's head and sure enough the shadowy silhouette of a nine-tailed fox sat atop his head. He let a malicious grin stretch across his face as he swept his gaze across the entire street, 
seeing the same figure above all the civilians' heads. His heated gaze coupled with his growling was met with shock and fear-fueled silence. He stopped growling and after glancing up at Gurunai, Anko, and Hana and seeing their amused expressions continued on his way towards the academy. It continued this way for the remainder of their walk to the academy, they'd walk, Naruto would glare and growl at a few mouthy civilians with the three as backup, and then they'd continue on their way. The entire way there. The red-headed fox boy's stomach slowly filled with dread. It wasn't that he was afraid of anyone at the academy or in the village anymore, no he was afraid of Kuranai. Before they'd left she made him promise to be good. He knew that meant no pranking, killing, maiming, or stabbing any of his new classmates, but she also said he had to be, nice to them. He had no idea how to be nice. His social skills were about as advanced as Anko's, or even less so. Hana was always telling him stories of how Kur and I would get on to his sister about not being mean to people. If she couldn't manage, there was no possible way that he could. He only knew how to act around them because he had years to learn how, and even now he's still fucked sometimes. Letting out a silent sigh as they came into sight of the building known as the Academy, the fox boy decided to wing it and see how it went. Who knows, he might make a friend or two. Haha <laughs> yeah fuck that. He was here only because old man Hokage made it part of their deal that he had too. If it wasn't for that he'd still be in his beloved forest. Oh well, it was only one year. How bad could it be? We're late because of you two and your little fight, said Gurunai, shooting the two culprits light glares that caused the two to chuckle lightly, so your class is already in session. We'll walk you to it so you don't get lost. Hey I wouldn't get lost. Protested Naruto, I have a great sense of direction, says the one who got lost twelve times today, chuckled Onko as she ruffled his hair causing him to growl and swipe at her hand. I was not lost. I was, exploring. He argued weakly. Sure you were sport, laughed Anko as they entered the building. A comfortable silence descended on the group as they made their way through the hall towards Naruto's class. It only took a few moments for them to arrive outside the door. Hana walked forward and knocked on the door, and after receiving the go-ahead the group walked inside. Naruto immediately began to scan his surroundings of all possible escape routes as he entered the room. He blocked out the banter going on between the trio and the man that he assumed was to be his new teacher, opting to try and get a grasp on the humans he was supposed to make pleasant with for the next year. They all seemed rather ordinary and bland save for a few. There was one group in the back, consisting of a pineapple-haired kid and a chubby boy eating potato chips. The pineapple-haired boy locked eyes with Naruto for a few moments before he laid his head down on his desk and muttered something incoherent that sounded like troublesome. The next person that caught his eye was a boy with a high collar and sunglasses on. He wasn't sure, but he swore he could hear buzzing coming from his jacket. The smell of dog is what alerted him to the next interesting person. A boy with a dog on his head and familiar red fang markings on his cheeks was glaring down at him, and next to him sat a blonde in purple staring inquisitively down at him. Curiosity getting the better of him, Naruto turned and addressed Hana. Hey Hanachan, Is that the annoying mud of a brother that you're always ranting about? Asked Naruto, his voice carrying across the room hoping to get a reaction out of the boy. His hopes were met when the dog boy bristled and stood. What did you say you freak? Naruto growled in turn and began pulling on that orb of power deep in his gut before Hana's laugh snapped him out of his anger induced trance. Yes Naruto that little mud is my brother, and calm down Kiba he's only teasing giggled Hana. The now named Kiba grumbled as he sat down, glaring at Naruto as the redhead shot him a triumphant grin. His grin quickly faltered when he caught Kuranai's withering glare out of the corner of his eye. He went back to studying the interesting ones in his class. There was some pink-haired girl openly glaring at him to which he responded in kind with a wink that made her sputter indignantly. Then he locked eyes with the duck-haired wonder. Why did he call him the duck-haired wonder you ask? Well quite simply the boy's hair was in the shape of a duck's ass and it amused Naruto to no end. The boy had one of those looks that screamed pampered asshole as he brooded and glared down at Naruto as if he were a lesser being. Yeah, he could already tell he didn't like the kid. The sound of his name being called grabbed his attention and his head swiveled over towards his older sister Kurinai. Naruto we're going to be leaving now, we have stuff to do and you have class to attend. Please try not to cause too much trouble. Remember your promise, Kurinai said to him before she pulled him into a hug. I'll try Nechan, but you know me. Trouble always seems to find me. He replied with a grin as she rolled her eyes and walked out. See you later Gaki. Make sure you beat one of the kids into a pulp for me, said Achiri Anko as she ruffled his hair once again and shunshined out of the building. Before he could start his tirade against Anko for tousling his hair Hana pulled him into a quick hug and said, Bye Nardo. As long as you don't kill anyone I'll be happy. Oh, and at least try to be friends with Kiba. You two could stand to gain some friends. Disappearing to the sounds of two indignant hey yes, 
Hana could help the laugh that bubbled out of her chest. Naruto turned back to the classroom full of students and growled at their curious stares. The fuck y'all looking at? Sighing mentally, Iruka knew he was in for a long year. He turned to the rest of his students and began to address them. Well students as you can see we have another student who'll be joining us, said the instructor before turning to Naruto. Why don't you introduce yourself to the class? What do you mean? Asked Naruto as he narrowed his eyes in suspicion. Iruka seeing this elaborated, like tell us your name, your likes, dislikes, dreams, and hobbies. Just so we can get a feel for who you are. Naruto eyed the instructor warily, trying to see if there were any tricks in the man's statement but after finding none figured it wouldn't hurt. He did promise Kurunai he would be, nice, after all. Fine. The name's Naruto Uzumaki. I like a very select few people in this village, training, and pranks. I dislike everyone but the few people that I like, Anko's snake summons, cowards, and those who judge based on appearances. My dream is none of your kami damned business, and the only hobbies I have are training, pranks, and scaring people shitless. Cross me or piss me off and I'll kick the ever-living shit out of you. Any questions? The entire room was completely silent, shock evident in all of their faces. Iruka was worried, he was already apprehensive taking in the Jin Shuriki of the Nine Tails, but after hearing his introduction and seeing what kind of metal state he was in it only made him wonder if he was right for the job. A hey, alright. Thank you for that, colorful introduction. Why don't you go take a seat so we can get started with today's lesson? sputtered Iruka. Naruto shrugged and scanned the room for an open seat. After a few moments he found the only open seat was next to some dark-haired girl whose face was red. He stalked forward up the stairs, relishing the fearful expressions that were being sent his way as he ascended. He sat down at his seat and propped his legs up on the desk as he waited for Iruka to begin the lesson. He could feel the girl staring at him as he sat, and the longer she did so the more irritated he got. Finally he couldn't take it anymore and turned to face the girl. All right what do you want? He growled out startling the girl. He was expecting the familiar feeling of fear to envelope her, but was shocked when instead of that he received, excitement. His confusion only furthered when she started giggling. What the heck was she giggling about? He was getting really pissed, and she hadn't done anything but giggle and look at him. Just as he was about to snap at her, she leaned forward and whispered something into his ear. Everyone watched with bated breath as they waited for the Naruto to lash out in anger and injure the girl. Imagine their surprise when instead of getting angry, his face turned as bright as his hair as he jerked away and stared hard at the girl. The girl simply giggled at him and turned back to the front waiting for Iruka to begin the lesson. Naruto regretted where he sat. He would rather be sitting next to High Lord Broody Pants than next to this, this, girl. He had no idea what to do in this situation, he'd never been in one like this. He'd never been told something so, sweet Kemi. One thing for sure, he needed to tell someone about this, he needed help understanding what he just heard. He couldn't tell Anko. No he knew his sister well, and she'd do nothing but laugh and make it worse. He thought about telling Hana, but for some reason he didn't want to tell her about it. Kurunai, that's who he'd tell. She was always the sensible one of his sisters and wouldn't simply laugh in his face at the situation. He hoped she could help him out, because he was clueless as to what to do. As curious as Iruka and the rest of the class were to what Naruto was told, they were all too scared to ask the redhead, and they didn't think the girl would tell them. So Iruka just decided to get on with class. Okay everyone, welcome to your first day of the last year in the academy. This year will prepare you with all the knowledge and rules you need to go by to make it in the world of the shinobi, along with practical skills that will be essential to your survival. Like every year we're going to begin with introductions. Naruto already started us off, so who wants to go next? As the class began the introductions Naruto regained control over his wild thoughts and focused in on what was being said, only really caring about the people he thought were interesting. He learned some pretty interesting stuff about his classmates. Imagine his surprise when he realized he was in a class full of clan heirs. Wow, old man Hokage must really trust him not to hurt any of these humans. He was even more shocked to learn that the, girl, next to him was not just a clan heir, but the clan heir for the fucking Hyuga clan. He should have known since the eyes were a dead giveaway, but he was a bit, distracted by other things at the time. Something wasn't adding up though. He'd had a few run-ins with the Hyuga and knew they were known for being cold and emotionless, felling as if they were superior to all other clans, but this girl, Hinata was her name, was the exact opposite. Just by her appearance he could tell she was nothing like her family. She was all giggly and blushing. What she was wearing was also vastly different from the flowing robes he'd seen the other Hyuga wear. She was wearing a simple black t-shirt with fishnet underneath it that went down to her elbows gray shorts, and standard blue ninja sandals with heels on them. She was sitting leaned back in her chair with her legs crossed like she owned the place. Yeah, 
If it wasn't for the eyes, you would never be able to tell she was a Hyudga. So absorbed in his observations was Naruto that he missed the next question being asked by Iruka. Iruka not liking being ignored picked up a piece of chalk and chucked it at Naruto's forehead, just hard enough to get his attention. What he was not counting on was Naruto's three years of training to kick in, and for him to snap into focus and grab the piece and throw it right back at him. Iruka had to hide his shock as he caught the piece of chalk that was thrown back at him. Most academy students couldn't do what he just did. Naruto, maybe you should start paying attention when I'm speaking, ordered Iruka, trying to bring attention away from what just happened. Naruto snorted and replied, sure whatever. What were you saying? Iruka sighed. The Hokage had warned him about Naruto's behavior, about how it might be a little, rude, but dealing with it firsthand was taxing on his health. I was asking the class if anyone knew any jutsu already. Those who do are going to give demonstrations out in the training area, explained the scarred man. Oh okay. Yeah I know some jutsu, that all? Said the fox boy as he waved his hand dismissively at Iruka. Ignoring the gesture Iruka turned to address the rest of the class. All right then class, if you'll follow me we'll get started with the demonstrations and then after that we'll have lunch. Everyone in the class got up and followed the instructor out, some whispering and shooting Naruto nervous glances. When Naruto stood to get up and leave he glanced over and saw Hinata staring intently at him, as if she had something of dire importance to tell him. Before he could question her on the stair it turned playful and she broke out into a grin before telling him, Has anyone ever told you that you have a really nice butt? Someone had in fact told him that, his sadistic pervy older sister Anko, but she didn't need to know that. Naruto couldn't get out of the classroom any quicker, fleeing the sounds of her amused giggling. He caught up with the rest of the class moments later as they stood in the middle of a large clearing that was clearly used for training, practice dummies and targets scattered around the field. One of the students, the fat one, was already demonstrating his technique, his arm expanded to three times its normal size. Naruto thought it was pretty cool that he could increase his size like that. The next to demonstrate was the pineapple-haired kid. He used his shadow to take control of the blonde-haired girl and made her do a weird dance that Naruto found pretty dang funny. Then Kiba showed his beast mimicry by turning Akamaru into a clone of himself, blonde did a mind transfer jutsu, and glasses showed off his bugs. The only ones left to demonstrate apparently were him, High Lord Duck Butt, and the pervy Hyudga. The pale-eyed girl went first. Activating her Byakugan she demonstrated its 360 degree field of vision. While everyone else was amazed with the skill, Naruto cringed. That only meant that no matter where she was looking, she could still see him. He shuddered when she turned to him and Nanto discreetly winked at him. Finally it was High Lord Duck Butt's turn, and the way the pompous ass walked up he knew that the jutsu he was about to demonstrate was either ridiculously cool or he was full of himself. Naruto was betting on the latter. The raven-haired boy flew through a few hand signs at a speed that impressed everyone and then proceeded to blow out a giant ball of fire. The ball of fire flew forward and destroyed one of the practice dummies, exploding into a brilliant sphere of destruction. Naruto had to admit, that Jutsu was pretty cool. He was considering rethinking his nickname for the boy, at least until he looked dead at the redhead and smirked. Nope, looks like he was staying high lord duck but Alright Naruto, you're the last one up. Blow us away said Iruka as Naruto walked out to demonstrate. As he walked he passed right by the duck butt himself, and the boy bumped into Naruto's shoulder on purpose before smirking at him again and walking away. Naruto let out a low growl that startled a few that heard it. That was it, he was going to show the little asswipe that he was not to be trifled with. Time to one-up this bitch. Naruto lazily held out his right hand palm up and everyone watched, amazed as smoke and embers materialized from the air and swirled into his palm into the form of a slightly glowing ball of black smoke roughly the size of a baseball. A wild grin covered his face as he gazed at his creation. Unlike the quickly made balls of smoke he made in his spar against Anko, which were grey in color and only powerful enough to stun an enemy, this one was for destructive purposes. The only drawback it had was that it took longer to create than the other version, which he could pretty much spam. He cocked his arm back and tossed the ball of smoke at a practice dummy on the far side of the training area. He turned and stared directly at the duck butt as the ball sailed in a lazy arc a small trail of smoke showing its every move as it descended on the unsuspecting training dummy. As soon as the ball made contact it exploded in a giant ball of smoke and embers. Unlike High Lord Duck Butt's fireball, which cratered the landscape as well as burning everything in the area to a crisp, Naruto's ball of smoke's deadliness came from the sheer heat emitted. The dry heat was so high in temperature that it sucked the moisture from everything caught in the blast before pretty much baking it. It only took a few seconds for the smoke to clear, and when it did students and teacher-like jaws dropped. The ball of smoke didn't dent the ground, but everything in the blast radius was now a charred black color and when a slight breeze rolled in, 
the once proud training dummy blew away into ash. At the sight of the duck butt's completely shell-shocked face Naruto couldn't help the crazed laughter that exploded from him. You know, he just might like it here. Sarutobi Hiruzen, the third Hokage, sat gobsmacked as he stared at his crystal ball while Anko and Hana were rolling on the floor laughing their asses off, and Kurunai stood shaking her head. He knew Naruto was strong, how couldn't he be when he was trained under three of his most powerful kunoichi? but he wasn't expecting Naruto to bust out a jutsu that was on par with Sasuke's grand fireball jutsu, Silas said that. He sighed and rubbed his temples. He could see a lot of council meetings with angry civilians in his future, and he bet his title as Hokage that the subject of discussion would be the little red-headed fox boy that had somehow wormed his way into his heart. Oh well, at least this next year will be interesting. Naruto couldn't keep the malicious grin that had spread across his face at bay as he crouched atop a building watching a trio of drunken humans stagger home the full moon's light casting the alley below him in shadow. His tail lashed behind him viciously and his ears twitched with excitement as he watched the group meander into the alley below him, completely unaware of the impending doom perched above him. The redhead slitted blue eyes shifted into scarlet and black as he prepared to impart justice under the drunkards, slinking down the building's walls as he recalled what the trio had done to gain his ire earlier that day. Naruto groaned in annoyance as he made his way out of the academy doors. His first and last year of school had been exactly what he thought it would be aggravating and a waste of his time. He already knew everything that Scarface was teaching thanks to Kurene and Hanachan pretty much beating the information into him, and projectile throwing and spearing were things that he and Anko had done on a regular basis since as long as he's known her. Seriously, when would knowing the shot I'm Hokage could use would Jutsu save him in a fight? If that wasn't bad enough the teacher's assistant that Scarface had was constantly trying to sabotage him by placing Genjutsu over his written test and fighting him harder than he would the others in spars. The Genjutsus might have worked, if his older sister wasn't known as the Genjutsu mistress of Konoha and already drilled into him how to dispel low-level Genjutsu like the ones being used on him. Not to mention that he could easily see through them with his special eyes. As for the spearing, while three years under some of the most powerful kunoichi the village had to offer meant Naruto was easily stronger than the average academy student. He couldn't afford to be weak like most of the other students in his class. Seriously. These pathetic humans were going to go get themselves killed, save for a select few. Suddenly, a large force on his back made him stumble forward before a large blush spread across his face. He could feel two mounds pressed up against his back as slender arms wrapped themselves around his waist and pulled him into a tight embrace. Naruto knew damn well who it was doing this seeing as she did it every day they got out of the academy, and despite all these times she's done it he still can't help but blush like an idiot. Unaru kun purred out Hinata as she relished the embrace she was giving the fox boy, you weren't going to leave without little Omi now were you? Naruto tried, keyword tried, to fight down the blush that marred his face, but with the Hyuga air snibbling on one of his ears that was proving to be a futile effort, and if he was honest with himself he didn't know if really wanted her to stop. The other students that made their way out of the school along with some of the adults, namely the shinobi parents, watched the two interact with varying faces of embarrassment, envy, amusement, and pity. The civilian adults however just watched on in disgust at the interaction between the perverted heiress and the fox boy. They couldn't understand how the Hyuga clan could even tolerate their heiress being around what they saw as a demon, let alone flirting with it. But hey as long as it wasn't their daughters they were fine with just glaring at the pair. Naruto finally having had enough embarrassment at the hand of Hinata and fed up with the glares from the silly mortal civilians detached himself from her embrace and schooled his expression into one of irritation. He turned to his wayward companion his ears and tail twitching in annoyance. Would you cut it out you cammy damned pervert, he growled out with an embarrassed glare as he began walking again. Seriously, can you go one day without feeling all on me? When Naruto had met Hinata on the first day of the academy oh so long ago, he knew from the first words she spoke to him that she was different from the rest, namely that she was a pervert when he told Kurunai of his encounter with her she merely chuckled and said that she sounded like a nice girl much to his dismay. He had been hoping that when he showed up the next day and glared at her when she spoke to him that she would get the picture and she would leave him be and he could go train in peace. Hell, normally doing that was enough to make most people steer clear of him. It worked on the other girls that had approached him to ask him on dates because of his mysteriousness. It worked on all the cannon fodder that had tried to speak to him. It worked to a lesser extent on Kiba and Sasuke. But the two were so cammy damn stubborn it'd take nothing short of physical assault to get those two to leave him alone, and he was pretty sure the two didn't mind fighting him. Naruto really didn't mind either, they were some of the few in the class that could match up to him. Unfortunately, or fortunately depending on how you see it, it had been made quite clear time and time again that Hinata was not like most people, and was either immune to his death glare or just didn't give a shit because she was undeterred by it. 
over time without him really even knowing the two had grown close to each other, often going off to spar when school was over or grabbing a bowl of ramen together, well for Nardo it was several bowls, with a grin reminiscent of his old one, Hinata skipped up till she was side by side with Naruto and wrapped her arm around as much to his eye and giggled, Ah, oh, but I like spending time with my little Naru-kun, Naruto just sighed and continued walking through the village. The two were an odd pair. Naruto's blunt, sarcastic, and somewhat angry disposition matched up next to Hinata's cheerful, carefree, and perverted one. As different as they were after months of the two bickering, well more like Hinata making perverted comments and Naruto growling back angry retorts, they bonded and became the best of friends, despite the fact that she constantly got on his nerves with her perverted crap. To his sisters it was a godsend, someone besides them had been able to make it past the fox boy's barriers and became friends with him. To Hana the feelings were mixed. While she was glad that he'd made a friend, she couldn't help this ugly feeling that bubbled up in her chest whenever she saw the two together. She knew the feeling was mutual because she'd caught Hinata giving her glares whenever she and Naruto were in the village together and they happened to cross paths. Over the past eight months he'd built his toleration for being in the village for extended periods of time. Not because he wanted to of course, his sisters made him go, saying that they refused to let him sit and mope in the forest of death all day. He begrudgingly relented, and had been slowly acclimating himself to the village ever since using the training grounds and eating ramen, something he didn't have much of in the forest. He also liked scaring the humans that glared at him. Just a quick flash of his eyes and he could feel the fierce around them, and the redhead loved it so very much. Recently though he noticed that the glares and whispers that were usually aimed at him were starting to slide onto the perverted Hugo latched onto his arm that he called friend, just like with anyone else who was closely associated with him. Like now, as much as the people hated him, some of that hatred was moving off onto her and he didn't like that one bit. He glanced over at the girl walking next to him and wasn't surprised to see that she wasn't smiling, but glaring just as heatedly back at the villagers glaring in their direction. She even went so far as to flare her Byakugan at some of them. Naruto let a small genuine smile grace his visage every time she saw her do that. He remembered seeing her doing that and thinking that if she could glare down villagers like that then she'd earned a little respect in his book. He turned to her with a sly grin. Don't worry about the humans. It's not like they matter or anything, he mock whispered to her causing her to giggle and the civilians around them bristled. H hey who th the hell you tt talking about d doesn't mat matter? Slurred a drunken civilian as he stumbled up to the pair with his stupefied friends behind him. Yeah you damn demon brat. Growled out a woman that came stumbling up besides the man, the only one that doesn't matter is you. He he yeah, laughed the last man in the group as he pointed down towards Naruto and Hinata, why your w worth less than tt the shit on t the b bottom of a v villager's boots. And why why your little girlfriend t2? Naruto had to try really hard to suppress the killing intent that was building inside of him, a low growl escaping from his clenched shut mouth. He could deal with people insulting him, they'd been doing it all his life. He's heard it so many times he didn't really give a shit what they had to say about him anymore, but he'd be damned if he let them insult someone else just because of their association with him. A large smile split his face and he scratched the back of his head before letting a chuckle escape his lips much to Hinata's amusement. She'd seen him use that smile on many villagers before this and it was always amusing what became of the situation. It was a smile that promised pain if whoever was causing it didn't back the fuck off. The thought of jukening them into the hospital like she has many times before had crossed her mind multiple times, but Naruto's hand gripping hers in the cold aura that was surrounding him was reason enough to control herself. He was planning something, and she could tell it wouldn't be good for them, but hilarious to watch. Oh worthless are we? Naruto chuckled good-naturedly as he slowly released his hold on Hinata and dipped his head low, hee hee sorry I don't think so. One of the drunkards moved forward to grab Naruto, but stopped when Naruto slowly looked up and glared at him, his eyes shifted into their nightmarish black and red form. The smile on the redhead's face took on a chilling look causing the villagers surrounding them to stop cold. The killing intent spilling out began spilling out of him getting a few whimpers from the crowd. He not a grin and added in her own making even more whimper and a few fall to their knees. The only worthless things here, human, are you all for trying to scare a few academy students? He he and oh how the tables have turned, and you all are the ones with fear in your hearts. I'm going to tell you one time, and one time only. You may have been able to bully me before, but not anymore. I'm not the same kid I used to be. I couldn't fight back then, but I will now. So I suggest you, don't. Test. Me. Understand? Good. Fucking humans. With that Naruto grabbed a giggling Hinata's hands and they continued forward on their journey to one of the many training grounds, matching grins on their faces as they left a wake of terrified villagers behind him. Naruto wasn't done with the trio, oh not by a long shot. 
he would have to teach them a lesson. You don't wake a sleeping demon. As the duo and their killing intent left the area the civilians began to move and resume their daily life, albeit a bit shaken. Unbeknownst to the duo, the Hokage and a group of Jonin were watching the entire confrontation. Hiruzen could only sigh and shake his head at the whole event. He didn't know who to be mad at, Naruto for scaring the shit out of the civilians again, or the civilians for letting their hatred blind them and starting it. Those two are becoming Jinan tomorrow? Sighed a bearded man as he took a long drag on his cigarette, they're going to be a handful. I know it's not his fault, but I thought I told him to stop messing with the villagers months ago, muttered Kuranai as she stood with her hands on her hips shaking her head. Ha ha that's my little brother. He makes me so proud cheered Anko with tears in her eyes as she watched him depart, all the others surrounding her sweat dropping at her exclamation. The San Daime Hokage turned to the man next to him. The man seemed to be nonchalantly reading a small orange book, but Hiruzen could tell that the man wasn't paying attention to the book, but rather the redhead walking down the street. He certainly will be interesting, drawled out the man in a lazy tone before flipping to another page in his book. The third Hokage could only smile. It seemed like the copycat had taken an interest in the fox boy. It was now five hours later, and time for Naruto to exact his vengeance on the poor fools. Sliding to a stop behind a dumpster 30 feet in front of the trio, Naruto put his hands into the ram seal and inhaled as much as he could before slowly exhaling a cloud of smoke that quickly filled the alley. The three drunkards noticed the smoke and stumbled to a halt, their unease growing as the smoke surrounded them its wavy tendrils swaying in an almost enticing manner. Their unease turned to fear when they began hearing hurried footsteps sounding around them, and scattered laughter that sent chills down their spines. Wordlessly the three latched onto each other and started to inch backwards back the way they came, until they were halted by an echoing, amused voice. Oh I wouldn't go that way if I were you, he he he. The three whipped their heads around and caught sight of something that would haunt their dreams for weeks to come. It was brief, only for a moment, but the three saw the silhouette standing near the entrance of the alley. The silhouette wasn't what terrified them, it was the eyes. The two slitted eyes seemed to gaze into their souls, glowing a burning red-orange as if they were made of flames. They could see the rage and excitement in their crimson depths, promising terror and pain to those on the receiving end. Just as quickly as it appeared, it was gone. The haunting visage fading away as if made of the smoke that surrounded them, their gaze still locked on the spot it had once been. Silence descended on the alleyway. The three wanted nothing more than to sprint back the way they had came, but something told them that it wasn't a good idea. They couldn't move even if they wanted to, their bodies not responding to their commands. This wasn't a matter of fight or flight, their bodies had slipped into a response that was the death of shinobi and civilian alike. They froze. They had frozen in what to them was a smoke-filled death trap, and they were afraid of what else inhabited it. The silence was shattered by a pair of sounds that sent dread into their souls. A low whistling tune could be heard coming from the alley's opening accompanied by the sound of heavy footfall, and metal scraping across the earth. Their eyes still trained in that direction, they watched as the figure of their nightmares shambled out of the abyss. Leathery skin wrapped around its thin rail-like frame and giant round pitch black pits took up half of its face. The other half was taken up by a stitched closed grin that literally split its face in half. Giant metal wristbands scrapped across the ground as its unnaturally long arms trailed behind it. It stood at least ten foot tall, dwarfing the trio but its true height was unknown due to the boneless manner in which it moved. It would use its long slender legs to walk forward while its upper body stayed stationary in the position it was until it was horizontal with the ground, and then it would slowly raise its upper body until it was hunched over its legs, the arms still trailing behind it. Tears were streaming down the men's faces and whimpers escaped their throats, as the creature made its way towards them. Thought of running and escape had voided their brain as they exuded fear from every fiber of their being. One by one they slowly slid to their knees as the creature stopped and stood towering over them. The whistling stopped, and for what seemed like hours the creature just stood and stared at them, its head cocked to the side as if it was contemplating something. The men's terrified stares were fixated on the nightmare creature as metal scrapped across earth while the creature raised its lengthy arms. Slowly it raised them until they were high above them and placed its long spindly fingers on its mouth. It worked its fingers in between the stitches before turning its head to look down at the men. For a moment it stilled as if turning into a statue, and then it began. It started as a dull whine that barely reached the men's ears before it slowly intensified, growing louder and louder by the second as the creature started pulling down on its jaw. The sound of slowly ripping flesh sounded through the entire alley as the beast forced its mouth open and pulled it open wide, stretching it to impossible proportions as it let out an earth-shattering bellow. That was the last straw for the three, as raw terrified screams ripped out of the men's throats and they retreated into blissful unconsciousness 
the last thing they saw being the gaping maw of the creature coming closer and its nightmare bellow. Naruto couldn't stop the chuckle he escaped his mouth as his eyes returned back to normal, his gaze still on the three now unconscious drunk men. He dispelled a genjutsu around him, the smoke clearing and the beast disappearing in a fine smoke that dispersed soon after. He let out a satisfied sigh before leaping onto the building next to him and speeding off to the forest of death, his revenge exacted. Moments later a shaken pair of Anbu appeared and grabbed the downed civilians before disappearing again. They had something interesting to report to the Hokage. Naruto chuckled evilly as he slowly opened the door to his treehouse and slunk inside. Another successful night of messing with the villagers, no one was any the wiser, and tomorrow he would become a Jinan. He was so busy thinking about how awesome a ninja he would be that he didn't notice the company in his midst, at least not until they flipped on the lights. Naruto nearly leapt out of his skin when his clear blue eyes landed on the forms of Anko, Hana, Kurenai, and the Hokage. His evil chuckle turned to one of nervousness as he scratched the back of his head with one thought going through his head, busted. H hey everyone. F fancy mm meeting you here. He stuttered out as his eyes darted around desperately looking for an escape route. Before he could even find one. He felt something slithering around him and lock his arms into place before he could even react. Looking down he came face to face with a full-sized reticulated python. Gulping he looked up at the faces of those present, and they did not look happy. It was the Hokage who decided to speak first. Naruto, where were you tonight he asked, and before Naruto could answer he spoke again in a tone that brooked no argument, and don't lie to me. I know all about your little midnight excursions, or did you think the Hokage didn't know what was going on in his own village? Naruto opened and closed his mouth as he tried to find something, anything, to say to his grandfather figure, but nothing came to mind. Before he could speak, he was interrupted again. Naruto, whispered Kurenai in a tone that made the fox boy feel like shit, you took it too far tonight. They deserved it, he growled in defense his tail lashing in anger and his hands clenched into fists. I tolerated the pranks because for the most part they were harmless, sighed the Hokage. I turned the other way when you got into those brawls with those drunken villagers, but this is unacceptable. You put three men in the hospital for mental trauma they will never get over. They deserve worse. Naruto muttered. How can you say that? Yelled Kurenai. Stop acting like you don't have a conscious. Like some sort of monster. But that's what I am, he roared back in a rage that shocked the others. A monster a demon. That's what those pathetic human villagers see me as. It's what I am. They won't throw their hatred at me because of it, well I'll throw it back tenfold. You're not a monster or a demon, yelled Hana with tears in her eyes, how many times do we have to tell you that before you get it through your thick head? A dry chuckle escaped his throat as he closed his eyes and shook his head before looking up at the group, pain, hatred, and sadness swirling in their azure depths. You don't have to kid me anymore. I know what I am. How the villages have been telling me since I could remember. These ears aren't for show, he grumbled as he looked down and clenched his fists, his ears flattened and his tail ceased its movement, I hear all the whispers, all the humans talk about when I come around is how I should have never been born, that I'm a monster. I hold the fox that attacked all those years back. Silence reigned as Naruto dropped that bombshell. He wasn't supposed to know. He wasn't supposed to know until he was a Jonin level ninja or at least 16. He he honestly. I felt stupid I didn't realize it on my own. I mean, I have fox ears, fangs, and a tail. I became the damn thing for a little bit when that mob attacked me. They will always hate me. Naruto, you can still change the way they see you, said Sarutobi, trying to regain control over a situation that had rapidly spiraled out of control, you can still make them accept you. I don't want them to accept me, roared the fox boy with righteous indignation, I want them to fear me, and fear me they shall. Why? Asked Anko, trying to understand, why do you want them to fear you so much? They hate me now, and in that hatred they become stupid enough to think they can attack me and the things I care about. It's only talk now, but what if one day they attack? He ran it as he paced side to side, his tail lashing angrily behind him as the others slowly caught on to what he was talking about. I won't let it happen. I'll make them fear me, I'll become so feared that they won't dare to harm me or anyone I care about. Naruto, all the pranking, the fighting, and tonight were because of us. Hana whispered, asking the question on everyone's mind. Yes, he yelled out, throwing his hands in the air, I couldn't care less about what those pathetic humans think about me, but when they started talking about you all and Hinata they crossed the fucking line. Anyone who even thinks of harming any of you will be dealt with. Everyone stood quietly around the now panting Naruto as they digested the information he just gave them. Everything, all of the pranks, and fighting, and scaring people shitless wasn't because they insulted him, but in his own twisted way to protect them. 
The three girls were fighting back tears while Haruzun had sighed and pulled out his pipe, lighting it and taking a long drag. Naruto stopped his pacing and looked at the group, and instantly his ears drooped as a sad look crossed over his face. He didn't mean to snap at them like this, and he definitely didn't mean to make them sad. He tried to find the words to make them happy again, but no matter how much he searched he couldn't seem to find the right thing to say. His gaze lowered to the floor as he grit his teeth. He was supposed to be protecting them, not making them sad. With his gaze lowered and lost in the sea of his emotions he didn't notice Kurunai, Hana, and Anko walk up to him, but he sure felt the pain as they simultaneously punched him on the top of his skull. He hissed in pain and grabbed the top of his head and then glared up at his attackers. The glare melted of in zero seconds flat and a small whimper escaped his throat as he gazed into the eyes of death himself. Death being three angry women of course. Anko grabbed him by the front of his coat and yanked him towards them, a squeak of fear sliding out as he was drugged forward. Do you think we are weak Naruto? Asked Kurunai with a hard edge to her voice that sent chills down him in the Hokage's spine. And no of course not. You three are some of the strongest people I know, he yelled back, afraid they were going to hit him again. You think we can't handle ourselves Gaki? Growled Anko. No. I know you can. Then what in that thick skull of yours made you think that we needed you to protect us? From the words of villagers of all things? Sighed Hana. Naruto sighed and mumbled out, I just didn't want you guys getting hurt because of me. We are perfectly capable of fighting our own battles Naruchan. Chuckled Kurunai as Naruto bristled at the name he was called, I know you just wanted to protect us, but you don't have to get all worked up over the words of the villagers. Let them talk. Unless they try to physically harm you let them stew in their ignorance. I don't think you realize how close you came to not being a ninja tonight. What? Shouted Naruto, his eyes going wide in terror. Naruto, I may be fond of you, but I'm still the Hokage. If it wasn't for me covering this up for you then the civilian council would have found out and you'd be in jail and you would have no future as a ninja. If it was anyone else then I wouldn't have lifted a finger, explained the Hokage as he exhaled a crowd of smoke. I told you the pranks were fine since no one really got hurt and Kur and I always made you clean up whatever you messed up, but this was too far Naruto. If this happens again, I'll have no choice but to punish you. Naruto hung his head in shame. All he'd wanted to do was protect those precious to him, and he'd ended up pissing them all off. Sorry, he whispered out, fully chastised, I didn't, I wasn't trying. To cause trouble, Kur and I smiled and pulled the boy into a warm embrace before replying, it's okay. I know you weren't trying to cause trouble. From now on though, control yourself okay? I know it's hard to sit there and listen to the villagers talk trash about you, but you have to let it go. Alright? When she received a meek nod in reply she continued, Good. Now go to bed Toto. You have a Janan exam to pass tomorrow. I'll see you in the morning. She leaned down and kissed him on the forehead bringing a small smile to his face before she turned around and walked down the hall to her bedroom. He received his respective hugs and aggravating head rubs from the old man and Anko before they both departed, the Hokage back to his estate and Anko to her room, leaving just Hana and Naruto in the room. The two of them locked eyes for a few moments, their faces impassive, before Hana let out a playful growl and held her arms out. You just gonna stand there or are you going to give me my hug? The smile on his face grew as he walked forward into the bone-crushing hug that Hana gave him. He could feel the blood rushing to his face as his cheeks turned red and his tail slowly started wagging. He didn't know why they did this. He could hug Anko and Kurunai with no reaction, but whenever he was near Hana he couldn't help himself. Unlike with Anko and Kurunai, he's never thought of her as a sister, and the reason why was unknown to him. She was more like a cool older best friend, one of the only ones he had in one of his most precious people. She may not be a sister to him, but he knew he would kill for her just like the other two. You're going to be the death of me you know that? The brown haired teen muttered into the top of his head. At which he could only give a sheepish chuckle and sorry as a reply, go get some rest. You have to go pass your test tomorrow, and you know you're not a morning person. Chuckling in reply as he stepped back out of the hug, Hav was petrified moments later when he felt her lips touch his forehead. It was brief, nothing more than a friendly peck, but it was enough to set his face ablaze and make him dart out of the room. In his haste he never noticed the matching blush Hana sported on her cheeks or the quiet snickering of Anko and Kurunai as they watched from the darkness of the other hallway. The classroom was abuzz with energy as students flitted around in excitement as they waited in anticipation for the test they were soon to take. The general atmosphere was penetrated when the door was slammed open getting everyone's attention, and a perpetual cloud of irritation entered the room and sullied the mood. Underneath said cloud of irritation was none other than Naruto Uzumaki, the crimson-haired fox boy of Konoha, tail slowly lashing side to side in anger as his ears twitched erratically. 
He stormed up to his normal seat and sat down with a huff and then leaned forward and buried his head in his arms. A few minutes later the mood swung back to a positive one and the general chatter and noise rose back to its previous level while Naruto glared into space, mimicking the look of a certain Uchiha sitting across the classroom. The reason for Naruto's sour mood was of course the villagers. The day had been great up until he made it to the village, and the scowls and whispers hit him. It was especially bad today, because of the night beforehand, and he was having trouble not slicing out their throats when they made lewd comments about his sisters and Hana, but he made a promise to let them handle themselves and he would keep it. So 15 aggravating minutes later he made it to the academy. No one in that room was brave or stupid enough to approach the irritated fox boy, at least until one grinning Hinata Hyuga entered the classroom. She stopped and swept her gaze around the room briefly, coming to rest upon Naruto. Her grin never wavering she walked up the stairs and made her way to her seat next to Naruto. He could feel her presence drawing closer and before she could sit down he turned his glare upon her, as if trying to burn a hole into her face. Everyone watched in shock as Hinata didn't even falter and sat down, and then proceeded to pull him into a hug that made him look like an angry cat. Naruto's neck creaked as he slowly looked up at a grinning Hinata and growled out. Hinata's simple response was to lean down and bite one of Naruto's angrily flicking ears with a mischievous glint in her eyes. The minute her bite connected, a massive shudder shot down his spine all the way to the tip of his tail, and his face turned as red as his hair. His previous irritation was replaced with burning embarrassment as he freed himself from Hinata's grasp. She raised her hand to her mouth to try and stifle the giggles coming from her, but the amused noise made it to the ears of everyone in the room. Naruto's gaze turned towards the rest of the room as they tried and failed not to laugh and he fixed them with a volcanic glare that silenced all but the cause of his embarrassment. What's the matter Naru-kun? What's with the glare? She asked with a large cheeky grin. As much as he'd like to be angry with his pervy friend, he could feel his anger quickly dissipating as he looked at the smile on her face. He never could stay angry at her, no matter the kinds of pervy things she did. He sighed and then leaned back in his chair with a resigned smile on his face. Nothing you perv. Just a bad morning is all. He nodded nodded and stood before walking over and sitting down in the fox boy's lap, causing the blush he finally fought down to resurface. He opened his mouth to shout at her, but then just sighed wrapped her arms around her waist, and resigned himself to his fate. It wasn't like this was the first time she'd done this, and it damn sure wouldn't be the last. That was the scene Iruka and Mizuki walked into, and honestly it was more normal than they wished it to be. Alright everyone sit down and shut up. The exams are starting now. Yelled Iruka getting the room's undivided attention, when I call your name come into the back room and we'll commence with your test. With that the two walked into the back room and began calling kids in. Naruto zoned the voices out and leaned forward pressing his forehead into Hinata's back, completely uncaring on whether or not the other kids passed. The only people that he cared if they passed were himself and Hinata, who was sitting on his lap with a content look on her face. Fifteen minutes and many broken dreams and shining victories later, Hinata was called. He could feel her nervousness as she shakily stood in front of him. You'll do fine Hinata-chan. Just do your thing, he said as she turned to look at him with a worried look on her face. You think so? She asked while looking down and poking her index fingers together. The look on her face tugged at Naruto's heartstrings. He really didn't like seeing her like this. He racked his brain trying to figure out a way to cheer her up and instill her confidence back into her. Then his mind stopped on an idea. He remembered something that Kuranai and Hana used to when he was about to try something. He hated it, but knowing who Hinata was, he knew she'd have no problem with it. Sighing he stood up and grabbed her shoulders, stealing himself and trying not to blush as he was about to do something he'd never done before. Hinata looked up in shock when Naruto grabbed her shoulders, and that shock furthered when he leaned forward and kissed her forehead. A blush exploded across her dazed face, and she stared at Naruto's equally blushing face as he looked her in the eyes and muttered, That was for luck. Now go and pass your test, and when we're all done, we'll go get ice cream, or something. He nodded, nodded distractedly and walked down the stairs to the room to take her test, oblivious of the shocked stares being sent at her and especially Naruto. Naruto for his part just sat back down and resumed ignoring everyone else. A few minutes later he nodded emerged from the room with a headband tied around her neck, her eyes clear now and a large grin on her face as she practically skipped her way up to her seat next to Naruto. Naruto was called next. But before he could head down the stairs Hinata stopped him. She grabbed him by the front of his jacket and before he could even register what was going on pulled him forward into a long kiss. Naruto completely froze, not expecting this, and when Hinata disconnected the kiss he still stood as still as a statue. She grinned at his state, and leaned in close so her lips were right next to his ear and whispered, that was for luck, 
and you owe me some ice cream. Naruto had moved so fast that it would make a cage jealous and was in the testing room with his back pressed against the door he just slammed shut, his eyes wide and his hair standing on end. The two Chunin instructors looked at the boy with surprise and worry in their eyes. Naruto, asked Hiruka, are you alright? Naruto, hearing his teacher's voice, calmed down and schooled his face into his normal look, one of mild annoyance, though the blush wasn't completely gone. I'm fine. Let's just get this over with, he grumbled. A all right then. Your written test and weapons test has already been graded so the last thing you need to do is the jutsu test. Show me the three jutsu, hench, substitution, and bunshine. Naruto nodded and put his hands into the ram sign and summoned up some of his chakra before initiating the first jutsu Iruka listed. A large puff of smoke later and standing where Naruto used to be was a miniature nine-tailed fox. Shocked and fearful shouts escaped the two's mouths before Naruto released the henge, a large mischievous grin on his face. He instantly launched into the second jutsu replacing himself with an irritated Sasuke for a few seconds before he switched back, the grin still plastered on his face. He placed his hands back into the ram sign and pulled up some more chakra. This last jutsu was a lot more difficult for him than the last two. Anko and Kurunai had said it was because he had such an abnormal amount of chakra so it was hard for him to do Genjutsu. Luckily, Kurunai had been drilling chakra control exercises into him ever since they started training him, so while he was nowhere near perfect, he could at least pull it off. He initiated the Jutsu, and eight Naruto's appeared behind him. He smirked as he looked at his bunshines before dispersing them. He didn't have the control needed to only summon one, but he could summon them in larger numbers. Alright Naruto. You passed with flying colors, exclaimed Iruka, genuinely happy that the boy had passed and missing the dark look that flashed across Mizuki's face as he stared at the fox boy, step up and claim your hit eight. The redhead walked up and picked out a hit eight with a black cloth, and wrapped it around his upper arm before turning and walking out of the room. He slid his gaze around the room as he looked at the rest of the humans conversing with their friends, and stopped when it landed on the day's smile of one Hinata Hyuga as she stared into space. Naruto walked up and claimed his seat next to the girl and waited for the rest of the class to finish testing. Thirty minutes later and the two were walking out of the academy as ninjas of Konoha. Just as he was about to ask Hinata where she wanted to go for ice cream, something caught his eye. Mizuki was walking shifty-eyed with a sad-looking academy student back behind the school, a sense of malice hanging about him. Naruto never liked the guy, and seeing him now set off an internal alarm that something was amiss. His instincts had never steered him wrong before, so he saw no point in ignoring them now. He turned to the confused-looking Hinata and gave an apology. Sorry Hinata-chan, but that ice cream is going to have to wait. Mizuki is up to something, and I need to know what. Naruto stayed low as he tracked Mizuki through the streets of the village, Hinata close behind. Naruto couldn't shake the feeling that something terrible was about to go down and it all started with Mizuki. The pair were far away enough that they couldn't be sensed by the silver-haired Chunin, but close enough that they were in their line of sight. Unfortunately, they were out of range of even Naruto's excellent hearing which meant they couldn't eavesdrop on the conversation taking place between the pair. From the look of the smile on the boy's face, Mizuki was consoling the boy, but something wasn't right. Naruto was pretty good at reading people, a skill painfully acquired from his run-in with the villagers and then honed with his countless practice bouts with Anko and he knew there was something very wrong. There was a dangerous glint in Mizuki's eyes, and a hardness to his kind smile that made it glaringly obvious something was amiss. It was apparent that Hinata had the same feelings as him, her normally large grin replaced with a look of wariness. Naruto gave a low growl in frustration at not being able to hear his words before stopping and looking over at Hinata with a small amount of surprise as she silently activated her dujutsu. She focused hard on Mizuki and after a few moments of staring she gasped quietly before grabbing Naruto's hand and quickly dragging him away back the way they came. Once they were well out of range of the silver-haired Chunin Hinata whirled around with alarm on her face as she spoke seriously for the first time since the fox boy had known her, we need to go get Hokage-sama right now. Naruto nodded as they sped towards the Hokage's tower as fast as they could, ignoring the glares and shouts of villagers as they dashed through and around them. Naruto knew that whatever made Hinata act serious had to be the same because she was never like this. What's wrong? What's the silver-haired bastard doing? Mizuki is convincing that kid to sneak into the Hokage Tower later tonight and steal something called the Forbidden Scroll as some makeup graduation test, she whispered out in reply as they were amongst tears that need not be privy to the info, I don't know what this scroll is, but if it's important enough to be hidden in the Hokage Tower then it must be important. Too important for a test for a Jinan exam. Naruto let a low growl slip out as he processed the info that Hinata had just given him as they neared the tower. 
so that silver-haired bastard was planning on using that kid to steal from his gramps, like hell he was going to let that happen. The old man had told him to stay away for the day since he was talking to the Jonines about team placements, but this was too important. He needed to hear this now. There was one thing that was bothering him though. How the hell was this kid supposed to get into the Hokage Tower and steal the scroll? There was no way he could fight through all those Anbu in the Hokage himself and get the scroll when he didn't even qualify to be a Jinan. He shook his head as they rocketed through the doors of the tower and made their way to the Hokage's room. He'd worry about that later. Right now they just needed to get to the Hokage. They started to slow down as they got to the receptionist room right before the Hokage's and Naruto's scowl deepened as he locked eyes with the lady. She never liked him, and he never liked her so there was a long history of hatred between the two seeing as she always tried to keep him from seeing the old man. He didn't have time to argue with her right now though, so just as she was about to open her mouth and stop them he growled out. Stow it old lady I know what the old man is doing but this is important. Before she could offer a reply the two newly made Janan dashed past her and without knocking Naruto shoved the doors open, surprising Hinata and the room's occupants at his brashness. Hiruzen looked at the two, his eye twitching dangerously as he locked eyes with the fox boy. Hinata shifted nervously at the gaze of everyone inside, but Naruto remained unaffected, at least until he felt a very familiar glare being leveled at him by one Kuranayuhi. He paled and his tail fluffed out in alarm before throwing his hands up in front of him and quickly yelling out. I know we shouldn't be here right now but this is important. Like Hokage needs to know right now important. The Jonin in the room and the Hokage looked a little curious at the boy's declaration before Kurunai spoke. Naruto, if this isn't actually that important I'm going to have Anko run you into the dirt once all this is over. Naruto paled even further, but Hinata came to his rescue. It's true miss. I'll vouch for him. Kurunai's glare lessened before she looked over to the Hokage who was looking at the two of them sternly. He could see how disheveled and out of breath the two were, indicating that they had likely sprinted the entire way here to tell him whatever it is they needed to tell him, so he decided to hear them out. He reached down and activated a security seal on the bottom of his desk, causing the doors that had been thrown open to close and the room to glow blue for a few seconds before returning to normal. Now what is so important that you two would barge into my office during team selections? Naruto glanced at Hinata and saw that she was looking at the ground with a nervous blush on her face. He frowned and grabbed her hand before looking up at the Hokage. Mizuki is up to no good. Hinata and I followed him after the Janan exams because he was talking to this kid who failed and, well I had a bad feeling about him. Hinata used her Byakugan to read his lips since we were too far away for us to hear what he was saying. He told the kid that there was this makeup exam he could do. Said if he wanted to become Janan he needed to sneak into here and steal something called the Forbidden Scroll. The tension in the room grew at the mention of the Forbidden Scroll and the Hokage's eyes took on an even more serious glint. He turned to Hinata who squeaked and hid slightly behind Naruto as the old man spoke. Are you absolutely sure this is what you heard Hinata? I need you to be 100% certain on this. She gulped before nodding her head, I'm certain Hokage-sama. That's what he said. After that we made sure we got away without him noticing us, and then we ran here as fast as we could to tell you. The Hokage gave her a warm smile and nodded his head. Thank you too for getting this information to me as quickly as you did. I will deal with Mizuki. You two may go enjoy the rest of the weekend before your team placements. He nodded nodded in acceptance, but Naruto pouted and lashed his tail slowly as he looked at the Hokage. Aw oh, come on old man. I wanna help beat up Mizuki team. Please. The Hokage's eye twitch returned as he replied. Naruto this matter is out of your hands now. Thank you for telling me, but your part is done here. Also, what did I tell you about calling me old man? The fox boy shrugged, to not to, but it's too much fun, and come on. Let me help. The Hokage sighed before looking over at Kurunai who just sighed in turn and nodded before turning and smiling sweetly at Naruto, an action that caused the boy to start sweating as he looked at her wide-eyed. He knew that look too well. That was the Kurunai is pissed and if you don't listen then she will hurt you look. Naruto, if you don't leave now, not only will I get Anko, I'll tell your little friend there all of the embarrassing things you've done since I've known you including all your weak spots. The fox boy paled even further before turning and dashing out of the room, yanking Hinata behind him as he ran from his older sister's wrath. Kurunai let out a sigh as she turned to Hiruzen. Sorry about him Hokage-sama. I've been trying to teach him manners and such but it's like trying to teach a cat to bark. He just chuckled in return, not to worry Kurunai-san. I'm quite used to him and his antics, dash his eyes regained their serious glint before he spoke again. Now, let's talk of how we're going to handle Mizuki. Naruto and Hinata had just made it out of the tower before she slowed to a halt causing Naruto to slow with her. He turned to her curiously and saw a look that he knew meant trouble. Hinata had a huge blush on her face, 
but instead of her characteristic smile she was glaring as hard as she could which with the blush made it look like a dangerous bout. She slowly started walking towards the fox boy whose tail and ears were twitching frantically as he tried to look for a place to escape. He didn't like the look on his best friend's face. H.E. not a what? What's wrong? She glared harder before reaching up and flicking him on his forehead, eliciting a yelp out of the fox boy as he in turn glared at her. The hell was that for? You put me on the spot after you blew the doors to the Hokaye's office open, in front of all of those people. He smirked. What's the matter? When it's me you couldn't care less, but when it's with other people you're all of a sudden so shy and nervous. Can't handle being put on the spot. She flicked his forehead again making him growl as she growled back. You did it in front of the Hokage. You know how embarrassing that was? You never had a problem with being on the spot in the academy? So what's so different now? She snorted, I couldn't care less what they think of me, but those people are our superiors. Not to mention one of them will be our sensei. Naruto smirked and was about to reply before Hinata smirked dangerously and took a step towards him. Naruto gulped and took a step back before shock and fear ran through him as his back hit a wall. Before he could dash to the side Hinata's hands shot out smacked the wall next to his head, trapping him in front of her as her smirk widened into a grin. Naruto did not like this situation. He didn't like it one bit as his eyes darted around looking desperately for a way to escape, that is until she started leaning in closer. Naruto couldn't help the blush and shock look form exploding across his face as his efforts to find an escape doubled. You owe me more than just ice cream now Naruto-kun, she whispered as she closed in on him. Amused at how easily flustered he got when it came to close contact. L like W what? He stammered out as his blush reached maximum capacity, turning his face as red as his hair. Before Hinata could reply, a loud cough could be heard near the two as they turned their heads, and what they saw brought two different reactions to the two kids. Naruto turned completely white as his fear peaked. He was screwed and he knew it. Hinata just narrowed her eyes and glared at the newcomer. An action mimicked by the one that interrupted the two. And what exactly are you doing to my Naruto-kun, you shameless pervert? Asked an enraged Hana as she closed in on the two, her arms crossed and her eyes furious. I'm simply having a little fun with my dear Naruto-kun, you little pup, replied Hinata with a cheeky grin as she turned and walked up to Hana. If one could hear the inner monologue of Naruto right now it'd sound something along the lines of, shit 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 this is bad. This is so bad. Why this? Why now? I need to get out of here. He had no idea why Hinata and Hana didn't like each other, even though to everyone but the red-headed idiot it was extremely obvious, but every time they saw each other he could feel the anger rolling off of them at each other in waves. He tried to ask them separately why they didn't like each other, but they just brushed the question off and replied along the lines of it's a girl thing. He'd asked Kurina and Anko but the two just smirked, the latter laughing her ass off at his expense, and told him that he needed to figure it out on his own. He'd figure it out later. Right now he needed to get the hell out of there before the fists started flying. Hana growled as she locked eyes with Hinata, and what makes you think that he's yours bitch? Hinata's glare intensified before a smirk stretched across her face, seeing as I kissed him first I'd say he's my tramp. Hana's eyes widened before she whipped her head around and glared at Naruto, who'd been slowly tiptoeing away from the two furious women. His inner dialogue now was just him screaming in fright as he began sweating bullets from her glare. Before the situation could escalate any further two Hyuga branch members appeared, wary of the scene in front of them as they spoke. Hinata-sama, your father requests your presence back at home. Hinata scowled briefly before nodding and turning to walk away, but not before looking back and smirking at Hana and Naruto as she said, You still owe me ice cream and more naruto don't think I forgot. I'll see you at team placement next week. Hana and Naruto stared at the retreating figure of Hinata before the two glanced at each other. Naruto opened his mouth to try and speak, but Hana beat him to it when she growled out, Save it, the hurt in her voice evident as Naruto's ears lowered, I'm going home. Naruto could only watch as she stomped away, tears threatening to fall from her eyes as he sat there and asked himself, What, what the hell just happened? In the span of a few hours he'd been kissed by Hinata, passed his Janan exam, helped uncover a plot by Mizuki, got into this whole mess of a situation, and then somehow hurt Hana. His head was spinning from all that had happened today and he couldn't make heads or tails of this latest situation he'd found himself in. All he knew was that he'd somehow hurt Hana, and he couldn't help but feel like shit. He didn't want to go home right now, he needed something to comfort him and since Sanko was out on a mission right now, Kurinai in a meeting with the Hokage, and Hana hated him there was only one thing to do. A few hours had passed, and the sun was beginning to set upon the land of fire. People were beginning to settle in for the rest of the day and going home, but one resident fox boy wasn't doing such. In a small stand he was sitting with his forehead firmly placed on the counter with 14 bowls of ramen stacked up on the sides of him, 
the now empty one in front of him making fifteen. He groaned out in both annoyance and sorrow as he continued to rack his brain about his current predicament. He just couldn't seem to figure out what he did or what he should do. Tuchi and Ayame stared at the boy who hours before had walked in with a depressed look on his face as he grumbled to himself. When they asked what was wrong he just grumbled more to himself before he started his ramen binge. The two sighed as Naruto grumbled out another order of ramen before Ayame sighed, No. No more ramen until you tell us what's wrong. Naruto looked up in shock and was about to protest but when he saw the look on her face and the amusement in Tucci's smile he knew that she'd make good on her threat. Sighing in defeat he told the two about the events that transpired today, leaving out the part about Mizuki seeing as he didn't think they needed to know that. By the time he'd finished speaking both ramen chefs had giant amused grins on their faces as they processed and easily understood what was stumping the fox boy. What do I do I am a Nechan. I don't even know what I did to make her mad. All I know is she's mad at me and I don't want her to be. I don't want her to hate me. Ayame smiled softly at Naruto before replying, Naruto, she doesn't hate you. She's just a little upset at you is all. I know this isn't all your fault and she knows it too, she's just upset at this whole situation. He looked up with unshed tears in his eyes, and a sad but hopeful look on his face. He hated this, feeling like this. If it was anyone besides his precious people that he'd pissed off he wouldn't care less but when it was them he couldn't help but feel like shit and it showed. But, but why? What did I do? I didn't mean to make her upset. Naruto she's upset with you because you kissed Hinata, but I didn't. She kissed me. Ayame raised an eyebrow, does she know that? Naruto replied, w well no, but what's that got to do with anything? Tuchi chuckled, you really are clueless you know that? Naruto huffed, what's that supposed to mean? It means that she Lee. Before he could finish he was elbowed in the stomach by Ayame as she sent him a glare before she turned to a confused Naruto and gently spoke. Naruto, do you like Hinata? Naruto still looked confused but replied, I mean yeah. Sure she's a perv but of course I like her she's one of my best friends. I like her, Ankone, Kurene, Old Man Hokage, and Hanachan. Ayame sighed as he misinterpreted what she was trying to tell him, no I mean, do you know what a crush is Naruto? He looked at her even more confused than before. Isn't that like, when you, smoosh something? Ayame just sighed in exasperation as Tuchi laughed his ass off much to Naruto's ire. This boy truly was clueless. She could just tell him what it was, but she wanted him to figure it out on his own. Naruto, I know why she's mad at you, but you need to figure it out for yourself. If you don't then it won't mean as much okay? Naruto sighed, alright alright, I still don't know what smooshing stuff has to do with all this, but I'll figure it out. Thanks for trying to help me Ayame Nechan. I'll head out now. I need to get home. Without another word the boy left the stand and started walking down the road, leaving his pan too thoroughly amused ramen chefs as he went on his way. Ayame sighed as Tuchi chuckled out, leave it to that kid to have two clan heirs pining after him and be completely oblivious about it. She chuckled, yeah, I can't wait until he finally realizes it. He's going to freak out, oh I hope I'm there for that. It'll be hilarious. Naruto growled to himself as he stalked down the road on his way home. He may have been even more confused now than he was before he'd gone to Ijirakus and he still had no idea how to solve this problem of his. So caught up in his thoughts that he'd completely ignored the glares and whispers of the villagers as he passed. He would have continued like this if it wasn't for the fact that he saw the kid that dashing towards the outskirts of the village with a large scroll on his back. Naruto had no idea how the kid had got past the Anbu and the Hokage, but he was not about to let this kid get away. He looked around and growled. He couldn't do anything here. Knowing the villagers, they'd attack him for trying to get at the kid, so opting to wait to attack he tailed the kid as he made his way to the forest. He followed him for a good 15 minutes as the kid clumsily hid himself from Shinobi as he made his way, all the while wondering how a kid with stealth this bad actually got the scroll. No matter, as soon as they got to the woods then he was going to beat this kid into the dirt and return the scroll to the old man. As they neared the forest he prepared to take down the kid, but before he could do such a hand grabbed him by the back of his jacket collar and lifted him into the air. Caught off guard that someone had gotten this close to him without noticing him with his enhanced senses he let out a surprised yelp as he came face to face with a masked jonin. I wouldn't do that if I was you. You might mess up the Hokage's plan, drawled out the jonin with a seemingly indifferent tone that held hidden mirth. Naruto hurriedly took in the man's appearance starting with his weird silver hair and face mask before glancing at his standard jonin attire and oddly slanted headband. He scowled at the man as his words registered while his tail lashed in frustration much to the man's amusement. What do you mean Hokage's plan? The man chuckled, I know you're smart enough to know that that boy would never actually be able to get that scroll. That thing's a fake, 
the old man is trying to see why Mizuki wants the scroll, hence why he let the boy take the fake. If I hadn't caught you tailing him and about to attack him, you would have ruined the entire thing. Aren't you glad I came along? Naruto had a sheepish look on his face as an embarrassed smile spread across his face before he uttered out a meek. Oh, oh indeed, he said as he lowered the fox boy back to the ground, now run along now, I wouldn't want to let this incident slip to the Hokage, or Kuranai if you don't comply. Naruto whirled around in alarm about to yell at the man, but was shocked silent. The man was gone, as if he was never there in the first place. Naruto stood there for a few moments before sighing and trudging away. With nothing really left to do in the night sky looming above, he really didn't have much to but go home. The journey didn't take him long, and before he knew it he was back in the forest of death in front of his treehouse. Without a word he walked up the tree and climbed inside. He was going to just walk straight to his room and sleep since he'd already eaten, but as he passed by Hana's door he heard the faint sound of sniffling and knew that he'd be stopping there, slowing to a halt in front of her door. He took a shaky breath before reaching up and tentatively knocking on her door. He heard a soft gasp before all went quiet for a few moments. A few seconds and soft footsteps later, the door opened and Hana stood on the other side, her eyes red but her face impassive as she looked down at Naruto. Before he could utter a word, Hana slammed the door in his face making his ears droop. He whined quietly before whispering out, Hana I'm sorry. Please don't hate me. I I don't know what I did, but I'm sorry I did it. He couldn't hear anything behind the door making him all the more distressed. Hana please. I if it's about the kiss thing with Hinata I. The door flew open before he could finish and there stood Hana, in nothing but a large t-shirt and shorts as she gazed down at the fox boy in fury. Naruto yelped in surprise before skittering back until his back was against the wall. He closed his eyes as he could hear Hana growling as she slowly approached. It wasn't my fault. She kissed me. I didn't do anything. I'm sorry please don't hurt me. I'll do anything you want just don't hurt me. The growling stopped as Naruto heard hands being placed on the wall next to his head much like earlier today. He slowly opened his eyes before they shot open and a blush erupted across his face as he looked up at a very close grinning Hana with a mischievous glint in her eyes. She leaned in close to him and stroked his whisker marks causing him to purr involuntarily as his blush grew. Anything I want you said? She asked with a smoothly as she continued her actions leaving Naruto in a state to only nod slowly. She grinned as she leaned back and put her finger to her lips as she pretended to ponder. Hmm, I guess I can't really blame you since she kissed you, and you did promise me anything I wanted, so I forgive you. Naruto let out a breath that he didn't know he was holding as he sighed in relief. That relief however was short-lived as he looked at the large smirk on Hana's face. She leaned in closely before whispering out, I want two things. The first, I'll think of something later. Naruto gulped before nervously asking, A and the second thing? Hana looked at him teasingly, Before I tell you, when she kissed you did she use tongue? Naruto couldn't help the blush that covered his entire face or his stutter as he tried desperately to form a cohesive sentence, WH. WHA, NN, no, WWH, what does, no she didn't. Hana just grinned at him and whispered, Good. Before he could even recover, she leaned in and gave him a long and searing kiss. Naruto was barely able to hold on to consciousness as it was, but when he felt a tongue enter his mouth, he promptly fell into the bliss that was unconsciousness. Hana broke the kiss off and smirked at her handiwork as Kurenai entered the treehouse. The Jonin just looked at the pair with a raised eyebrow before shrugging and walking down the hall past them and into her room. Hana giggled as a large wolfish grin spread across her face before she gave the unconscious fox boy a parting peck on the forehead before walking back into her room. That'll teach that Hyuga to go kissing her Naruto. The sun rose slowly over the village hidden in the leaves casting an orange glow over the buildings and forest. To most civilians the day was just beginning for them. They were waking and getting ready for work, saying goodbye to their loved ones as they set off. To most ninja the day had already begun as they were out training, doing missions, and more training. For one ninja, his day was vastly different from the average inhabitant of the village. How you ask? Well. How many ninjas are being chased by giant fucking spiders this morning? Naruto's foot had barely touched the tree branch before he shot off for the next one, eyes wide and senses going into overload as he tried to escape his arachnid pursuers. Having lived in the forest as long as he has, the fox boy had a general layout of the forest, but being as young and inexperienced as he was his guardians had forbid him from going into the more dangerous and unexplored parts, something that he regularly disregarded as his curiosity regularly got him into situations like his current one in which he stumbled into the area that was populated by giant spiders. Which leads to his current predicament, not getting eaten by said giant spiders. The hairs on the back of his neck stood on end as he leapt to the side just in time to avoid being trapped in the web of one of the spiders. 
He shuddered at the sight of the giant silk, knowing it was about as strong as ninja wire and that if he was caught in it he was dead. To think he was going through all of this to avoid Hana and Hinata. As he leapt off a branch he spun in midair launching a barrage of smoke balls trying to slow the giant spiders. He managed to hit a few and stop them, but just as soon as they were gone more took their place, enraged at the attack and even more set on catching him. Just as he landed, one of them managed to get in front of him. It raised its front two legs and swiped down in an effort to knock him to the forest floor. The fox boy leapt over the attack, twisting to the side in order to avoid being hit. He had avoided the attack, but in his haste to dodge he leapt over his landing spot, leaving him no place to land. Even if he healed pretty fast, falling from hundreds of feet to the forest floor was probably something he should avoid. Naruto let out a fearful yelp as his heart leapt into his throat as his descent sped up and the forest floor approached. Looking around wildly, he spotted a tree branch above him and threw his hand forward. A golden chain burst forth and wrapped around the branch. He lurched forward as the chain swung him forward just a few feet over the ground. He detached the chain and shot forward, flying over the earth as the angry snapping of spider fangs sounded behind him. He glanced back, a large grin on his face as he saw the spiders slowing to a halt, snapping angrily at him. He let out a triumphant laugh that quickly died as he looked forward and locked eyes with two terrifying beings, Anko and Kurunai. Unable to stop himself, he flew straight into the waiting arms of Kurunai, knocking her back a few steps but otherwise fine. He felt himself being lifted by the back of his jacket away from her embrace until he was face to face with two very angry Kunoichi. He let a nervous chuckle escape his lips as sweat bullets. He knew he was screwed. Kurunai smiled at him sweetly, the smile she reserved for whenever she was about to dole out punishment and asked, Now now Naruto. Care to explain why you are often a part of the forest we've told you time and time again to stay away from? I'd really like to know that too, questioned Anko. I come back from my mission excited to see my little Naruchan and not only is he nowhere to be found, he's disobeying me. Do you know how that makes me feel? Naruto gulped as he tried desperately to think up an excuse, racking his brain trying to think of anything that could get him out of this unharmed. The two saw the look on his face and immediately shut the idea down before he could even figure it out when Kurunai said, and if you tell us anything but the truth, I'll put you in a genjutsu and let Onko's snakes chase you. Naruto sighed and nodded before muttering too low for them to hear his face slowly reddening. What was that Naruchan? Asked Anko, you better speak up because we won't ask again. Okay okay I was. He looked away and poked his fingers together as he mumbled, I was avoiding, Hanachan and Hinata-chan. Anko and Kur and I just glanced at each other surprised, before looking back at the blushing fox boy, and why is that? Naruto sighed once more before explaining the previous day's events as he looked anywhere but at his two older sisters' amused faces, trying in vain to hide his growing blush as he remembers the reasons he was avoiding the two. Needless to say that by the end of the explanation, the two Kunoichi were highly amused. Anko was openly laughing at the poor kid as he screamed at her to shut up while Kurunai just smirked at him. Satisfied with his answer she dropped him to the floor where he landed with a surprised yelp, not expecting to fall. As he pulled himself up off the ground grumbling about evil older sisters laughing at his pain, Kurunai I asked him, So what are you gonna do about all of this Naruchan? Growling in exasperation he cried out, I don't know. I don't know what to do in this situation. I don't get what's going on at all, and no one will explain it to me. Can you help me cure Nay? Please. Kurunai looked over at Anko as she picked herself up from off the floor, the two sharing a silent conversation as the both smirked mischievously making Naruto panic. He didn't like those smiles. It was the equivalent of his pranking smile, and he was at the receiving end. Kur and I looked at him and chuckled out. Nope. We will not help you. Consider it punishment for disobeying us. Naruto groaned loudly, his tail lashing in annoyance before Anko spoke up. Also, you're not allowed to stay in the forest for the rest of the weekend. You have to go into the village during the day. W what? B but I can't avoid Hana and Hinata in the village. They'll find me if I'm not careful I know it. Anko smirked evilly, exactly, consider it training. Also, you need to figure out what you're going to do with those two, said Gurunai seriously. Naruto saw how serious she was inside knowing he had no say in this matter, that the thing though Kurune. I don't know what I'm going to do. This whole situation is, out of control. Kurunai and Anko snickered before the eldest one spoke. Naruto, while I'm still not going to talk you through this entire thing, I'll give you a hint. Before worrying about them. Figure out yourself. How do you feel about them in this entire thing? Really think about it. Now get out of here. Anko took out a pen and paper before scribbling something down and folding it and handing it to Naruto. Here take this. Go to the bookstore and find this and read it. 
It should help. Naruto nodded and took the slip of paper before dejectedly began walking back towards the village before turning and asking, Can't I just stay in the tree ho? The angry glares from the two eldest Kunoichi gave him all the answer he needed. With a surprised yelp he dashed away. Kuran I turned to Anko and asked, What book did you write down on the piece of paper? Anko just smirked in reply before bursting out into maniacal laughter. Kuran I looked at her for a few moments before realization set in. She glared at Anko. Do you have to try and corrupt my little Atoto? Anko smirked. He's mine too, and the kid's way to pure. Not to mention this is going to be funny as hell. It was fairly easy to tell that Naruto was not in the best of moods. All you had to do was take one look at the thrashing tail, ears flicking randomly, and the indignant scowl plastered on his face to do so. The scowl on his face could give the Uchiha's a run for its money. He glanced down at the slip of paper in his hand and screwed up his face again. What kind of book was supposed to help him with this mess he was in? What the hell did he do to get caught up in this in the first place? He had not a clue how he got into it or how he was going to get out of it, and that only made him angrier. Stupid Hana, and stupid Hinata. Kissing me. Confusing the shit out of me. What the hell did I do to deserve this? Why are you two so troublesome? So caught up in his ranting that he never noticed the person in front of him until he bumped into their back, startling him. He looked up to mutter an apology when he saw a familiar masked face with a curious look in his one visible eye. You know, it's polite to say sorry when you bump into someone. My silly little Janan. Naruto quirked an eyebrow. This guy was weird. Oh hey scarecrow guy. Sorry I wasn't all the way here. I can tell. So what's eating you up Foxy? Naruto scowled at the nickname as he debated on whether or not to tell him. As weird as he was he never showed any open hostility towards him so that got him some points in his book, and despite being a weirdo he was willing to help him. On the other hand, he knew absolutely nothing about him, so he could be trying to lull him into a false sense of security in order to attack him. He could plainly see that he was a ninja and a powerful one at that so if he wanted to hurt him it's not like Naruto could do much about it. Naruto sighed, he was too irritated to deal with this internal dilemma right now, so he decided he might as well trust him. No ninja has ever tried to attack him in broad daylight, and he didn't see this guy trying. He sighed and replied, troublesome women that's what. And my Nasan told me I need to find this book that's supposed to help me deal with them. Kakashi looked down at the boy more intrigued, oh? Sounds like you're in a pickle. What's this book called? Naruto pulled out the slip of paper and handed it to the man. Kakashi's lone eye widened as he saw the title of the book before closing into a proud shape as he smiled beneath his mask. He placed a hand on the young fox boy's shoulder as he reached into his back pocket. You may not know why yet, he said in a teary voice as he pulled out a small orange book and handed it to the youth, but you make me so proud. Go find a quiet place to read my cute little Janan, and may all your questions be answered. With that he disappeared in a swirl of leaves, leaving a very confused and slightly creeped out Naruto standing in the street staring at empty space. He shook his head and looked down at the book, noticing that it was the book Anko had sent him to go get. Shrugging he put it in his jacket pocket and decided to follow the weird scarecrow's advice and find a quiet place to go read. He couldn't go back to the treehouse, so he decided to go and find an empty training ground. It took him a little bit, but after half an hour of searching he finally found a training ground. Leaping up into a tree, he sat down in one of the lower branches and grabbed the orange book and cracked it open. He saw the author's name and paused for a second. Jiraiya? Why does that name sound familiar? Shrugging the thought away he flipped the page and began reading. For the first 20 minutes he remained mostly stationary, the only things indicating movement being a flick of his tail or ears, or subtle facial movements like the raising of his eyebrow or scrunching his nose. He still didn't understand how this was supposed to help him deal with Hana and Hinata. The only thing he could get out of this so far was that the main character was a clumsy but well-meaning guy. Nothing was really surprising about the book, at least not until he turned the page. He raised an eyebrow as the man found himself in a situation vaguely similar to one of the times he and Hinata had been training together. However, the similarities ended quickly as his eyebrows slowly raised and his face turned redder and redder as the minutes passed and his eyes scanned the page. Finally, he reached his limit and slammed the book shut before grabbed his face trying to hide his embarrassment. H how the hell is this supposed to help me? It's, it's just smut. He ran it in his mind as he tried to calm himself down, this has to be a prank. There's no way Anko Ne expects me to read all of, that. As he slowly calmed himself down shakily removed his hands from his face and grabbed the book from his lap. He had an extremely strong urge to throw the book across the training ground, but for some reason he couldn't find it in himself to go through with it. If he was honest with himself he wanted to know what happened next. Trying and failing to fight down his blush he slowly began to crack open the book before the sound of voices being carried by the wind made him snap it shut and shove it into his pocket. 
He looked down across the training ground and was surprised to see Kiba, Sasuke, and Hinata. The sight of Hinata made his heart leap into his throat. He wasn't prepared for this. He'd spent the better part of today avoiding her, but he knew he couldn't escape now. If he moved he would be spotted, and there would be no getting away from her. He sat as still as he could, but he knew it was inevitable that he'd be caught. Naruto, what the hell are you doing in that tree? He groaned, God damn it Kiba. He slid from his perch in the tree before glancing at the group as he replied, hiding from your stench mutt. Have you bathed in the past week? Kiba glared as the rest of them fought to keep their grins off their faces. I always wonder if you'll stop being a dick one day, and every day I'm disappointed. Naruto scowled, at least I'm not like a certain duck ass for hair having emo over there. Sasuke glared at him who promptly ignored him. Suddenly, his danger senses were tingling, and he quickly figured out why. Hinata was nowhere to be seen. Before he could move, he felt arms wrap around his waist and pull him into a hug. He turned his head to try and scowl at the cheekily grinning Hinata, but the fire behind it was dimmed greatly by the blush on his face. Hinata pouted as she whined, You haven't spoken to me once since we got here Naruto-kun. You're so mean. Before he could offer a reply Sasuke looked at Naruto with a glare. Fight me. Naruto still struggling to get out of Hinata's embrace snorted, Maybe if I cared. What are you all doing together anyways? We were all gonna do some spearing before the team selections Monday. We were trying to find you for the longest when I picked up your scent and followed it here. So do you want to fight or what? Naruto sighed. He had nothing better to do anyways, and it would be a welcome escape from his current predicament so with a shrug he said, sure why not? I guess I'll fight High Lord Duckass over there since he seems to want to fight me. Sasuke's scowl deepened at the barb, but otherwise he remained as impassive as ever. Hinata gave him one last squeeze before walking away with Kiba to give them some space as the two squared up into their fighting stance. Sasuke got into the Uchiha-style taijutsu stance, the interceptor fist, as he spoke for the first time, any rules, stupid fox? Naruto smirked as he lowered himself into his fighting stance. Crouching low with his feet shoulder width apart, right leg a few inches in front of his left as he bounced on his toes. His left hand was up near the side of his face and his right out in front of it. Both hands curled into clawed shapes as his tail lashed behind him. How about we keep it strictly taijutsu? Wouldn't want to hurt you too bad before team placement stuck ass. If the comment angered the Uchiha he didn't let it show as the two stared each other down for a few moments before dashing at each other. Sasuke threw out a strong punch that would have done some damage had Naruto not rolled around it, and using the momentum from his spin he threw out a leg sweep to the surprised Uchiha. Reacting fast, he leapt over the leg sweep twisting in the air to block the punch Naruto threw out right after the sweep. Catching his hand, Sasuke yanked him forward into the line of his incoming fist. Naruto let the momentum carry him forward and before the hit could land Naruto raised his free hand and deflected the punch away from him before rearing his head back and headbutting Sasuke. While the attack did little to Naruto, Sasuke was sent stumbling back, blood seeping from his nose as he tried dodge the onslaught of strikes being sent his way by the red-haired fox boy. This was the whole premise of Naruto's taijutsu style, hit fast without being hit, a never-ending barrage of attacks that utilized his monstrous stamina to put the enemy in a constant state of defense. No blocking for that would only slow him down, instead weave around every attack thrown your way and use that momentum to your advantage. Use every inch of your body as a weapon be it your fist, knees, feet, elbows or head and use his natural cunning to throw out feints and laser fast attacks that would slowly drive the enemy into the dirt. It was a style born of fighting against three kunoichi that could still wipe the floor with him almost every day for the past three years. Fighting against those that were faster, stronger, and more skilled than he was, he had to grasp a hold of his only advantages, his stamina and unpredictable nature. Using those, he created a hybrid style blend of Anko's snake style and Hana's Inuzuka taijutsu style that he mixed with his natural gifts to create his style. It was by no means perfect or finished, but with this he was able to at least land a few hits on them and last more than 10 minutes before getting his ass handed to him. Against a fresh out of the academy Janan, even if that Janan was talented, if they weren't able to keep up they would quickly be overwhelmed. Which is exactly what was happening to the Uchiha. Gifted as he was, Naruto's hard work and tenacity was outplaying Sasuke's natural skill. Sasuke may be stronger than the fox boy. But Naruto was far faster than him and he was using that advantage to its fullest. Sasuke was trying desperately to fight back as he grit his teeth, a look of absolute loathing on his face as he was continually pushed back by the red head. Try as he might he just couldn't hit Naruto as he flashed around him, weaving in and out of his strikes as he attacked with a flurry of unorthodox blows and feints. Naruto smirked as he saw the frustration clear on his face, amused at his opponent as he slid between the Uchiha's legs, crouched and ready to strike. 
he was tired of playing with him, it was time to end this fight. Naruto sprung up in a spin just as the Uchiha turned to face him, only to receive a face full of Naruto's tail. The blow did barely any damage, but served its purpose as a distraction and obscuring his vision as the next thing in the Uchiha's view was the bottoms of Naruto's ninja sandals. A split second later and Naruto launched his feet forward in a dropkick that smashed into the Uchiha's face breaking his nose and knocking him unconscious as he flew across the ground, rolling to a stop 20 feet away. Naruto landed in a crouch, a feral grin stretched across his face as he stood and looked at the shocked face of Kiba and the grinning face of Hinata. Damn Naruto you didn't have to kick his face in, laughed Kiba as he went to go check on the unconscious boy. Naruto just shrugged before letting out a huff and stumbling back a few steps as he received Hinata's attack hug. She giggled into his chest before suddenly Naruto was lifted out of her grip. Hinata looked up into the pale white face of a terrified Naruto as he was being lifted and hugged from behind from none other than Hana. Hinata's face morphed into a glare that would put the Uchiha to shame as Hana turned and addressed Kiba just before he could speak. Kiba, take the Uchiha to the hospital to get his nose looked at. Kiba sputtered in indignation, B but he's unconscious. I'll have to carry him all the way there and I don't want to smell like Uchiha. Hana's smile stayed in place as killing intent surged out at her aimed at Kiba who yelped in fear. That wasn't a suggestion dog boy. That was an order. Kiba nodded quickly before throwing Sasuke over his shoulder and booking it for the hospital as fast as he could. Turning back to the Hinata she grinned at the Hyuga princess. Hinata. I see you've been throwing yourself at Naruto-kun like always. Hinata smirked and replied, and I see you've been following after him like the good little puppy you are. Hana scowled briefly before her smirk reformed on her face, her grip on the terrified Naruto tightening slightly as the boy tried desperately to think of a way out of this situation, believe it or not but I'm here to offer a proposition. Hinata quirked an eyebrow as she eyed the Inuzuka heiress, I'm listening. Hana's grin widened, you and me, taijutsu match right her right now. Winner gets to take Naruto on a date. Naruto yelped in surprise, w what? What do you mean gets me? I'm not a prize. Don't I get a say in this? Naruto's cries went completely ignored as Hinata let a challenging grin spread across her face. Hmm I like that, but are you sure that you want to just so carelessly give me a date with Naruto? Hana grinned. Oh I'll be sure to have fun on me and Naruto's date. I'll tell you all about it. She walked over and sat Naruto down by the tree he'd been in, and before he could say anything he was shut up by Hana kissing him again. Naruto blushed wildly while Hinata hissed in fury as Hana walked back over and took her place across from Hinata with a smug grin on her face. Oh you didn't like that? It's gonna happen again on our date after I beat you into the floor. Hinata grinned evilly, oh I'm about to make sure it never happens again. Don't worry. This will only hurt a lot. Naruto sat in fearful anticipation as he watched Hinata and Hana stare each other down, killing intense filling off of them so palpable he could see Oni masks behind them. There was nothing he could do in this situation but sit and wait for what was going to happen. Either way, he'd apparently be going out on a date that he was in no way prepared for. Before the battle started he felt three familiar chakra signatures settle down near him. Looking around he saw Kurunai and Anko next to him while Kakashi took a spot in the tree. The trio's eyes trained on the pair of Kunoichi about to do battle. Mind explaining why the two look like they're about to kill each other Naruto? Asked Kakashi as he looked down with feigned boredom. Naruto sheepishly looked down at the attention he was receiving from all three Jonin as he replied, Well me, Hinata, Kiba, and Sasuke were doing some sparing. I kicked the duck hair the emo's ass. Hana showed up and forced Kiba to take Sasuke to the hospital, and now the two are duking it out to see. To see what Naruchan? Grinned Anko. Having seen where this was going, he blushed in embarrassment and anger at the nickname, to see who gets a date with me. It wasn't even my idea. They just went with it without even asking me what I think. Kakashi raised an eyebrow surprised at the interaction before chuckling out, Are those the two troublesome women you were talking about earlier? Also how's the book? Naruto's blush just increased as he glared at the masked man and a now giggling Anko, Both of you are perverts of the highest caliber. Kakashi just shrugged and Anko snorted before turning their eyes back to the fight while Kur and I just rolled her eyes at the two as she watched. The two had grown tired of glaring at each other as they dashed forward hell-bent on hurting the other. Hana launched a barrage of clawed attacks at the Hyuga air, to which the girl waved in and out of the slashes biding her time before launching a barrage of precision strikes against the Inuzuka. The attacks would have landed on a lesser ninja, but Hana was not a chunin for nothing. Hana dodged away from the strikes that would have left her arms useless and put some distance between herself and Hinata. She looked at the girl with a questioning eye. Your Jukan style, it's different I know. A lot more flexible to suit me. Now stand still so I can beat you into the dirt, cried Hinata as she surged forward and let loose another barrage of attacks that Hana deftly avoided. 
spinning around the last strike and delivering a fierce elbow to the Hinata's cheek. Blood exploded in her mouth, but she just grit her teeth and shook off the blow as she dodged another few attacks from Hana before leaping forward to the surprise of Hana, and taking a page out of Naruto's book, headbutt the Inuzuka as hard as she could. The two stumbled back away from each other, clearing their sight and the ringing in their head before going back on the attack at each other's throats once again. The four spectators watched the duo go back and forth for 20 minutes each trying to finish their opponent. Hana was panting as she rubbed her right arm and glared at the Huga air. It was weak from the Jukan strikes it and left leg had received. A few bruises and cuts adorned her body, but nothing a nice bath and good night's rest wouldn't fix. Hinata looked a lot worse for wear. As good as she was, she was fighting a Chunin, and a skilled Chunin at that. Cuts and scratches adorned her body and clothes as she glared back defiantly at Hana. Despite her injury she was not about to back down. Crouching low, she pushed as much chakra to her hands as she could which caused them to glow bright blue, promising pain for all who come in contact with them. Hana let out a low growl as she flared her chakra to her entire body, ready to stop toying with her and end the fight once and for all. Kurinai sighed as the two darted towards each other and disappeared to the shock of the other watchers before reappearing in between Hana and Hinata before raising both fists and slamming them down on the girls' heads, sending them face first into the dirt. The two leapt up sputtering indignantly before catching sight of Kurinai's death smile. The two paled before Kurinai looked down at them both. Now, both of you are going to sit down and listen. You are going to apologize to Naruto for dragging him into this, then you're going to apologize to each other for acting like spoiled brats to each other, and then you're going to suck it up and wait for Naruto to make a choice, growled out Kurinai as she glared down at the two successfully curbed and fearful Kunoichi, I don't give a damn who you like, but you are not going to act like rabid fangirls and fight over him anymore. You will be nice to each other or I will put you two in a world of pain. Do. I make. My. Self. Clear? The two nodded fearfully while Naruto and company quietly snickered at their predicament. The wouldn't be laughing long as Kura and I turned and leveled her glare at the fox boy and company quieting them instantly as she stomped over and towards them. As for you three, Unko I know it was you who told Hana where to find Naruto, and it was your idea to watch. Do something like this again and I'll make sure no one sells you Dango for three months. Anko yelped and nodded in consent as the weight of Kura and I's threat fell on her. The crimson-eyed woman turned her gaze up to a slightly sweating Kakashi, and you. You gave my little Atoto that book and his jacket. I'm giving you fair warning, and this goes to you too Anko. You turn him into a pervert and I swear nothing you do will stop you from feeling my wraith. Kakashi nodded while grumbling, why am I getting in trouble here? All I did was give it to him I'm not forcing him to read it. Kurinai intensified her glare causing him to chuckle nervously before disappearing via sunshine just before she turned down to the last one to receive her scolding. And you. I was going to let you figure this out on your own, but it's apparent to me this is worse than I thought and you have absolutely no idea what you're doing. I'll be damned if you hurt either one of them by being foolish, so starting after team placements you and me are going to have one-on-one -on -one lessons on how to treat a lady during your free time. Naruto gulped, eh and, why is that? Kurinai grinned, a very cheerful grin that filled Naruto with a deep sense of foreboding, but none more than her reply. Because after we are done with the lessons you are going to figure out what the hell is going in that head of yours and what you want, take them both out on a date and then you will choose. Naruto turned completely white as Kurinai's smile returned to being cheerful and free of malice. Now. I don't know about you all, but I'm hungry. Anyone want to go get lunch? That Kurinai can be terrifying you know? Grumbled Kakashi as he sat in a chair opposite the Hokage, still miffed about being told off by the aforementioned Jonin. Hiruzen chuckled good-naturedly, as he blew out a plume of smoke from his pipe, a good-natured smile resting on his face. Of course she is. She has to be how do you think she kept Naruto, Anko, and Hana in line all of these years? Kakashi nodded before the Hokage began to speak again. So, how do you feel about the team I placed you in charge of? Well, from what I can tell my team's Kunoichi will be a pretty damn good close-range specialist, one of my boys is a good mid to close-ranged fighter with powerful attacks, while the other is a good all-around fighter with an affinity for stealth. Do some of their other talents they'd make a good tracking and suppression squad. The only problem I can see is getting them to work as one cohesive unit. The Hokage chuckled, well that's what their test on Monday is all about isn't it? Let's hope they can see underneath the underneath. Kakashi gave the man his famous eye smile, I think they will. My cute little Shinan are smarter than they look. That's the end guys if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a comment this is Chaos Shinobi signing off.